Hey everybody, welcome to the AAA episode number 1020-208. It sounds Seven accurate. Hills. That, that's I'm right. saying it slowly, wait to see if, like, is that right? That's right, right? Yes, that is right. Okay, accurate. cool, cool. 208, we're off for you a good start. Because we weren't beforehand, let me tell you. Um, Yeah, so I just spilled a sugary drink on carpet. Had to clean that up real oh, quick. That boy. sucks. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I I know the home care secret: dab, don't rub. You know, let let it absorb using the towel that you're using. But I'm gonna have to go back over it with some carpet cleaner, otherwise that's just gonna turn into a dust ball mess wherever the sugary drink fell. Wait, Aren't you, you supposed to use club soda too? It. Well, I do have club soda. No, I'll, fuck it, I'll use club soda. Is that a trick? Is that a thing? I was asking. Oh. That, that, I'll do it if it works. Fuck it. I mean, I got I got club soda. No, you have to uh, immediately pour red wine on it. That doesn't sound accurate. No, it doesn't. Like even a little. Then after you're done, piss on it. I, uh, I mean, I've got a red carpet. Do you oh, actually? Okay, so you're, just, you're painting <laughs> over it. Is what you're doing. Darren Odell asks, "How sugary? How sugary is it? I uh, it was a rock star." Was it? Oh. it was so sugary, the carpet's teeth fell out. Yeah, it's a rock star, so pretty fucking sugary. And you know what happens when something falls over, right? That's carbonated, it fizzes immediately, so the rest of it's just flat as fuck. And you know, like you snatch it up, you know how it is, right? Like it falls over, and you're like, fuck! And like you, 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 you snatch it up and end up spraying it elsewhere because you grab it so fast. You know what I mean? You know, so you've ruined your carpet and your drink. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Polly is a talented man, man. Mm -hmm. He's a talented man, man. Yeah, man, man. I, I, I'm, I'm, it was a proxy spill. It's not like I reached for it and knocked it over. I turned my mic boom and the mic boom tipped it over. That's what happened. I guess it could have fallen yeah. on the computer itself. It could have been far that worse. Is talent. But, but we're all talented people here on the AAA though, aren't we? I mean, Fab Five Tre Freddy told me everybody's fly. What? Did you just reference Fab Five Freddy? I did. Well, color me impressed. We're off to a strong start. Well, it's going to be a hell of a show. Yeah, I mean, shit. I didn't even know you knew who Fat Five Freddy was. Well, it's actually a reference from a, a Blondie song called The Rapture. Oh, well, sure. Yeah. Because like every, well, not every, but there's a good dozen or more hip hop artists who have sampled that track. And yeah. Well, I'm speaking specifically because uh, Soldier Boy did it in The Boys. And. Uh, I listened to that song today. I went, and, you know, the Blondie version. I went and looked at the comments, and it's just so many of them are going. Ah, I remember me and my dad listening to the Soldier Boy cover back in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking great. Uh, oh shit! Before we went live, I mean, here we go. Let's just replay it. Okay, but what I'm going to do first before we replay it is actually turn the donations on. That'll be a good idea. Professional it might help. Yep, there it is. We all got to scream together. It's not as much fun. Blackout 8879. Thank you for the wow. When it happens, not after. <laughs> uh, Blackout 8879. Thank you for the $5 and the refry cat girl. Uh, please say this in the voice of a jaded New York mother. You're late, Polly. And this is going. You're this. And this. Uh, hold on. What? You're late, Polly. Okay, I, I I had to do a pre-read. You know how that is, Drunkle? Sometimes the lines are a little difficult. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's you know? a rehearsal, mate. It's a rehearsal. It's a rehearsal, right. Okay. Yeah. So, jaded New York mother. I can't do the Jewish New York mother. You know who can do that shockingly well is Zelthor. It's weird. It, it he, he can go, like, just full-on, like, displeased at the bar mitzvah band voice. It's great. Mm. Um, <laughs> sure, he's close to his father, but you know he hasn't spoken to his brother in four years. Does... That kind of sounds like a henchman's voice. 
Hey, hey, oh, hey, oh. <laughs> <Then it is. laughs> the boss told me to bring you here. I don't know nothing else. I just. <laughs> <laughs> Tad, it's Freddy. Tell us where you're bleeding. I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> but you just did. Hey, you getting <laughs> smart with me? Okay. You're late. You're late, Polly. And at this late, you're going to be late for your own funeral. Yeah. I've told you guys before. In my will and testament, I am going to have money to the funeral driver to drive around the block six or seven times. So I am indeed late for my own funeral. That's if they find your body. Yeah. yeah You're I, assuming I'm going to somewhere where they can get it. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm planning on going full Machiavelli and uh, Nicky o Machiavelli and uh, faking my own death and then going off to Bali. I think Bali. The American dollar Bali goes very far there, you know. Uh, Lament yeah, Guy, thank you for the five dollars and the refried cat girl. Here's your chance. Wait. Redo. What's on the menu? You, 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 Polly, this is your mother. You're gonna be late for your own funeral. It's your mother. <laughs> I'm smoking yeah, a pack yeah. of cigarettes. You're... <laughs> Polly, you're late. What are you doing? I'm worried oh, sick about you. You're never cool. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's the part you laugh at. It just... <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's good. All right. <laughs> What's on the menu? <laughs> oh, my, he's going already. <laughs> oh, here we go. And. Turning up the time away, you, you shot, shot me. me. He just wanted to know the time. Will everyone stop getting shot? Uh, okay, so what is uh, what is on the menu? Well, we got some space news, some very uh, good space news. We want to uh, increase Drunkle's existential on we when and if ever possible to the furthest Indeed. degree that we can. Yeah. Uh, there was very little going on in America this week that was funny. I personally don't find abortions over perceived losses of rights funny. I do. I I don't find news entertainers making excuses for them funny. I I I, I don't find uh, 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 pregnancy assist centers meaning they offer you everything but an abortion. It's like here's health. I've heard of this. What's that? I've not heard of these. But pregnancy assist centers? You've never heard of those? Like, yeah. Like actually, no, or I are you just why like Sinatra, a male, would not have heard of these. Yeah, I, no, I just want to say they've, they've come up because. Oh, jeez. Cheesy cinnamon monkeys. Cheesy cinnamon monkeys. Be shots. That was for you, Sam. Okay, Mr. Walrus, thank you for the twelve dollars. Yeah, no, that was my first thought too. Uh, yeah, I know, Mr. Walrus, thank you very much. It's been a while since we've seen a D shot. I appreciate it. It's true. Yeah. It's true. yeah. Carla, the TikTok superstar that she is in France. Um. It, there's centers, man, where they offer everything but, like I said, abortions. They will give you uh, first, second, third trimester assistance, uh, medical care, uh, a adoption uh, assistance. Like if you want to give the baby up for adoption, the various services that are available, uh, the abstinence, uh, uh, birth control methods, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Everything but an abortion. And a whole fuck ton of them have been firebombed. So why would you have heard of it? Because a whole fuck ton of them have been recently firebombed, destroyed, protested in front of, and otherwise just wrecked. Because somehow they're I, responsible for Roe v. Wade's downfall. I have not heard of this at all. That's interesting. Yeah. I have a question. Okay. And it's completely unrelated to anything, but I'm very curious. I figured it might be. Go ahead. Uh, how do you clean a cast iron skillet? don't yeah you don't they're meant to be you seasoned don't clean it over at time. all well i mean i bought water. a pre-seasoned one jedi ghost bear is a, uh, a a crisis pregnancy center absolutely definitely another name they go by for sure but i i bought a pre-seasoned one and i was like yeah i gotta i, I know i have to get the little chain thing like do i use water i know i don't use soap but I, I don't understand. I don't know if I use water or not. Do I just use warm water and then pat dry it? 
Uh, oil probably a best bet. Like, honestly, you don't want to de-season ever a cast iron skillet, right? So like, like hot water and a soak is is like you, yeah. Huh. I mean, do, you don't scrub it. Use a soft rag. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with a soft. Oh my god, how long has it been? No. Yes. You bloody fool. You bloody fool. You bloody fool. <laughs> and of course, it's far donating the talking Australian cursed duck. Space news! Yes, there is there is good space news. And Cult of Krill for the 750 company had an annual performance awards meeting over my over Miss Teams. They brought in someone to do magic over the internet. It was bad. I hope that the CEO's nephew and we didn't pay him. <laughs> so you went to an awards meeting. And on a screen, they had a magician doing tricks. That sounds ridiculous. Yeah. I would spend more time looking at the faces of people around me, like, can you fucking believe this shit? Than I would be looking at the magician. I mean, that better have been one hell of an entertaining magician. Holy fuck. Yeah, no kidding. So, I, I've seen a few people in the chat answered me, and it seems like the consensus is... Warm water, pat dry, and oil it. I pay for your food, you brittle boned fuck. See, Thomas, thank you for the $3. My week has been beloved dog dies, face hurts from dentist, and two shitty work oh, days no. in a row. Well, aside from all that, how was the rest of the play, Mrs. Lincoln? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, see, Thomas, that was good. That was good. But laughter in the face of uh, adversity. That's good. <laughs> Aside from the unpleasantness, Miss Lincoln, how did you enjoy our American cousin? See, because of Drunkle, I, I know that it's our, not my. Ah, uh, you do? Yeah. yeah. And he says he doesn't know things about American history. Pshaw, I, I never say. said that. I never said that. We invented American history. <laughs> Okay, let me read this one out. And I, I okay, so what I'm going to do is warm water on a cloth, pat dry, and oil it. I don't know what kind of oil to use. Naturally, being Italian, my gut instinct is olive oil. Well, yeah. But they, they make another kind? Yeah, you got uh, like virgin Enzo oil. oil. Uh, uh, yeah, oil there's engine oil, oil and olive oil, right? <laughs> um, oil. So let me read this donation out, see if you guys can make sense of it. To clean the cast iron skillet, bring it up to a hockey. Take take Africa the water. <laughs> bring it up to a hockey. Take Africa the water. Pour it in the water. Scrape the stuff out. Then add cooking well and reeat. So you gotta eat it at the end. I guess. Reeat it. Where are you getting that from? That's from Anthem. You gotta reeat it. So that's like Jeff Goldblum in the fly. <laughs> I don't even want to try and make sense out of that shit. Okay, but, people in the chat are schooling us. <laughs> Flaxseed oil, like avocado oil, and olive oil. Oh, yeah, okay, oh, olive oil. oil. Yeah. Again, I Canola think you guys oil. are making this up. There's engine oil and Baby olive oil. oil. That's, and gun oil, That's it. of course. And gun oil. And hair just be, oil, which is still just olive oil. Yeah, and, and like gun oil is really just thinned out engine oil anyway, so it's the same thing. Some baby oil on it. After oh, I, I forgot about baby oil. Its skin. Dirty of the time. Oh, wait, you shot me. <laughs> okay. Thanks for making me feel like a dumbass cult of krill, but I get your point. MS Teams, not Miss Teams. MS Teams is Microsoft's version of Zoom. We are all remote, and the magician was broadcasting to the company. Got it. So you guys all sat there in an MS Zoom meeting, an MS Teams meeting, and on one of the squares was some guy making balloon animals and rings that appear to be connected, disconnect, and whatnot. I don't, I don't know how you could do it. I couldn't be trusted to work from home. Because you wouldn't work? Yeah, I'd just be playing, like, Overwatch. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Drunkle? 
Do we point out that the man spent the last few years working from home, or do we just let it no, go? No, no, just let him. He'll, he'll realize it in time. Okay, okay. He, at the moment, he's, he's trying to list different types of oil. His brain is busy. <laughs> he's busy. He's busy. I, I, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm right. working on something over here. <laughs> No, I, I, I catch what you're saying, Call the Girl. I, I only recently had to start fucking with Zoom because uh, all of my contractor meetings happen that way. Um, I don't like it. I don't like it. I, 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 it's the first time I've ever thought of buying a green screen. Oh, fuck. Did you know you can use WD-40 as engine oil for about 200 miles? Then your car does this dono. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I turned that down by like 50% too. Yeah, so maybe turn uh, it down by 100%. You know? thank, thank you. See, Thomas, thank you for the $2. I heard space stuff and something nice slash related to that on my end. I've been playing Surviving Mars and man established a Mars colony is a lot of trial and error. We have space news on Mars, I think. Ooh. Yeah. We have space news on Mercury because everyone forgets Mercury and I find that sad. I think it's a cool little hot I planet. I don't forget Mercury is very often on my mind. Yeah. You know, Freddy or otherwise. <laughs> God damn it, I was taking a drink. Wow. <laughs> I, just, I don't know what makes you laugh anymore, Sin. I have, I a, a, good pun, a good pun <laughs> is always likely to get me. Ah, but it's got to be a good one. And therein yeah. lies the rub. All right, let's go. Sin, how are you doing? Uh, I Today's just one of those days where it's like no matter what happens, there's just never enough time. So I'm doing everything I can. And yeah, that's, I, I am busy. That's how I am. But you get the fireworks, though. Yeah, I, uh, I, I took the trip. I talked to Polly and Far and Sam the whole way there. I drove through the middle of boo -foo fucking nowhere. It, like I, I, there were Amish people and trailers, like actual trailer homes, broken down on the side of the road. It was a fun drive. Wow, sounds awesome. Yeah, I, I after this, Miss Sin and I are doing a midweek Sunday stream because of the strike on the second channel, and I have to record a speakeasy video with Fourth of July. Fuck, I have to go grab something on the other side of the room. That's what I'm doing. Grabbing things. <laughs> Molly Okami in chat. I asked the bartender for a double entendre, so the bartender gave it to me. Hey! <laughs> I liked it. I thought it was good, good for work. a little laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Let's... I'm down. <laughs> Let's see. Who wants to get right into the news? Who wants to do it? Yes, by all means, bring on the dismembered body parts. But you don't know that there's any of those. I do. Well, you know. We all do. Uh, actually, let me just turn down. Well, the... When I talked to you this morning, I had uh, two things I wanted to talk to you about. And we got so off track on the first one, I completely forgot about the second one. So the video I'm doing for the Speakeasy channel is, uh, again, the Ohio Liquor Association, the board that runs the entire liquor uh, distribution for the entire state, put out another list of their recommended 4th of July cocktails. So I wanted to ask you, what do you think are some American cocktails? Because I had a couple in my head. The Sazerac was the first one that came to mind. Sure. And the Manhattan. Like, do you have anything you think would be on that list? Bourbon sour. Bourbon, yeah, bourbon sour. I mean, the bourbon sour is obviously pretty straightforward, right? Lime mixed bourbon or simple syrup bourbon. Yeah. And then actual lime juice, God forbid, you know, that, a, that an actual lime was involved. But, you know, the Angostura bitters. The two drops makes all the difference, brother. Angostura is really underrated. Yep. I mean, I don't think you should drink it direct. Have you ever tried it? Like, put something like a yeah, TV I put it. Ooh. Yeah, it, it's pretty strong. But I, you know what I've taken to doing? That's pretty good. Even my fucking old ass mom likes it. The uh, sh putting a few uh, dashes of it in some Coke, just straight up Coca Cola. Huh? Well, we're talking about lime, 
No, Lime's Angostura no, bitters. Angostura bitters. Because limes is something that I know about. Yeah, well, huh? would you like to be limes? No. Oh. 17 bucks, you can be limes. Mm hmm. Paying 17 bucks to become something I no, don't know. Wait a minute. When was it? it? It used to be 17. Uh, Irene, excuse me. What the fuck am I talking about? It never was 17. It used to be 25. It used to be the uh, Goku banger. But now it's 22. Oh. Because it, the pop for 22 is better. <laughs> Well, uh, even, was... even my limeage is being discounted. Well, it, these are hard times. Like... And plus you get an exploding uh -huh. Bambi for 22. But Goku hard Banger, I mean, great. sure, you get a hot track hot by times. Zanuck and Skywalk, but, you know, you don't get Polly doing a thumper voice and an exploding Bambi. Who doesn't want to see Drunkle become limes? That's the real issue. I, I don't. No. Oh. I don't want to be limes. But just... But they're your thing. You just said. But, no, yeah, but like I don't want to become the thing. It's like oh. you're really into oil. Do you want to become oil? I'm not into oil. I was momentarily curious about it, so I watched a documentary about it. Educate and now yourself. You're bored of oil. You, yeah. You learned everything there was to learn about oil, and now you're bored. How about the history of it in terms of it being an illuminant and then a combustible? Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Here it is. Okay, hold on. I want to get the name right. I always want to get... Zeon Shodan. Shodan. Zeon Shodan. $11. Thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it. Polly, I've watched you for a long time, but I have finally... But I finally have to start donating to you all. You deserve it. And every week, I look forward to you three. Well, that's goddamn nice of you, man. Thank you, Zodan. Uh, Zeon nice. Shodan. That's a, Thank you, a nice donation and a fucking hell of a nice message. I actually appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, there's, there's there's so many quiet people that are watching you know what I mean and they're not like heavy duty up in chat not that we don't love you heavy duty chat people but then all of a sudden these people come out of the woodwork and it's like it's great to know there's people out there watching and enjoying it and looking forward to it and and, and Drunkle apologizes for being late all the time for you people that are looking forward you, to it you you were late <laughs> you've got some nerves sir I it's called throwing someone under the bus man it's fun it's a game Yes, we have buses here, Polly. Double deckers, no, they don't. crush you twice as hard. So, yeah, they are the, the apex predator of Britain, actually. What? I thought that was jihadis. Close second. Boom. And, and ethnic gangs with knives. Don't even have to have knives. Mm. They're not going to be ethnic. Mm. Or gangs. You are my first Eating dono ever. Well, pizza. that's uh, always Thanks nice to be Thanks for entertaining first. me in my sober state. Keep those two greasy fuckers in line. I don't think Trunkle's that greasy. But thank you, Silvermane. I appreciate that. It's not about your testicles. No! <laughs> uh oh. Thank you, obligatory wormy and silvermane. I appreciate it, guys. That's awesome. Don't forget about the host, though. Hit, dude, get, I, get Goku banger. Oh yeah, make just another limes. guy. I forgot about the rape gangs. Good call. Fuck. I mean, they're not technically rape gangs. Groomer gangs. Groomer, yes, yeah, so yeah. yeah. The, the, Try the, not to offend the rapists. The, yeah, they delve into rape on occasion through their ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> No! No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 No, wait, Drunkle. Your donation, there's more to it. Wait. No! <laughs> it's, he's fine. The whale was fine. Drunken Uncle, you generous man, you donated $30. I, drunken uncle, of my own free and volition, do humbly request that I be made into limes, and that I'm Welsh, and mum's net. Well, drunkle? You see, if you'd have said that to me, you could have got me to actually say it. 
Ah, oh, just another guy. We know. Why'd you have to say it? That's the worst part of it. <sighs> I went into a rage fest on Discord about that the other day. Rage fest. I did. I was yelling and screaming and Valine's like, why are you yelling at me? I didn't do it. And I'm like, I know, I know, I know. It just... She did it though, didn't she? <laughs> like, only someone who did do it would feel the need to say, I didn't do it. She's sounding guilty. I was talking about the grooming gangs. I don't really think she did it. Yeah, well, do we really know far, you know? No, no, Valine. Oh, 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 in which case, yeah, she definitely did it then. Uh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in any case, let's move on to the schnooze, because I said we would, so let's do so. And, uh, and we always oh, want to oh, start oh. off here on Wednesday with uh, total sensicalness. That's just how um, I roll. DM guide a whole 20 minutes ago through a dollar. Saying, here's a blast from the past. And he wants a, a, a Fran Fine voice, which... Uh, that was the woman from The Nanny, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you want to buy some armor? What kind of armor you got? There you go, DM guide. You got it. Thank you for the dollar. I feel dirty. Dirty. Dirty, dirty boy. Right, so here we go. Topless mom... Breastfeeding in boxer shorts yeah. tackles bald eagle to save pet goose. Yeah, I feel as though we had this on Monday. I feel that I don't remember that. Mm. As a matter of fact, I think that I don't remember that. Mm. Still a hell of a headline. <laughs> it's still a hell of a, hell of a headline. Again, I'll ask the same question. Why didn't she put the baby down? Yeah. In uh, my mind, the baby's just dangling from a tit, you know? I think it's like more by the mouth that she held the baby. Use the baby as it, a weapon. It is, boss. It is. But how long does it take to just set a fucking sack of potatoes down? Well, I mean, the thing, the thing about the sack of potatoes, if, if it rolls away it's still fine whereas with the baby not so much plus there's also Where's a bold eagle to? on the loose like you never know the bold eagle's gonna be like Do you know what fuck the goose mate there's a fucking bigger meal there so moving along yeah throw the baby at the eagle too much mayo subway customer arrested after shooting two employees and killing one over sandwich order good god what? Uh, what I'm glad is that they put the appropriate video to go with it. Yeah, this is the ad uh, here. Welcome to the Too Much Mayo Dancers. <laughs> Doc, thank you for the 350. Did you happen to get that cinnamon challenge video from Snooter? I... No. I don't know what that means. I... And I'm scared. <laughs> The, the snooter, they're still doing cinnamon challenge the old way, man. They're not snorting it. It's fine. Don't snort cinnamon, guys. <laughs> Seriously, not nutmeg, not allspice. Don't, none of them. Just keep your spice rack yeah. out your nose. Is what I'm trying Simonin's to say. Cinnamon is disgusting anyway. Um, send it to snooter on Snapchat. Okay, on it, right. No, I, I certainly got your message and like I responded to it, the, the DM, because I can't believe... I, you guys watch Cinnamon Challenge. I can't believe people are still doing that. And yeah, it's a goofy challenge, but I still consider it ballsy to undertake it. I wouldn't do it. Would you? No. No. No, I don't like Simonon. Let alone Cinnamon? I love it. Simonon. Shaminison? A fine Shiraz. Simonon. <laughs> See, I don't like it so much that I refuse to even say it. Remember, I'm the guy that made a woman walk out of the room screaming, you're driving me crazy, by doing that. So, you know, I can, I can push buttons. I pay for your food, you brittle boned fuck. Uh, see, Thomas, thank you for the doll. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. That one up. Freedom. There we go. Squizzy for the 344. Guess who's back, Chuckle Cox? <laughs> Here's. 
I was like chuckle cucks. <laughs> I think I just provided you with like an opening to any video you might want to use, Squizzy. <laughs> In any case, here's five, count them, five Aussie dollar dues. Won't buy much, but it's something. Gonna go snort cinnamon now. No, 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 no. Sorry about that. Don't underrate any donation that you might give from a dollar up to the Golden Otter Thousand. And if, because uh, they're all appreciated. And if you can't donate, don't feel obligated to. Times are hard, and I understand that. Uh, you can hit that like button, uh, retweet the tweet that I forgot to send out that we were going live, uh, retweet the show with the share button underneath, or, of course, to help with the algorithm, that fucking overly complex promote who we want algorithm, Susan. And one of the few things that you can remainingly do to uh, assist any creator you might like is to leave comments below because it shows engagement and uh we one dollar equal one prayer okay you don't remember that me it's fine a dollar equals right. a prayer who the hell did that but what that yeah a dollar. Or one like equal one prayer i cry every time nothing all right no nah. but it's just for those terminally online me people oh okay yeah, in any case, the uh, no, anything that you might give is greatly appreciated. Uh... I mean, speaking of there, Polly, it's Doc for $3.50 about True Foodie. Saying drunk or working on his Churchill impressions tonight, I see. That's actually what I sound like, sir. Thank you, Doc, for the True Foodie. <laughs> It's be, and so, Doc, to answer your question, no, I didn't because I'm going to go full boomer here and admit it. I don't know what Snooter on Snapchat is. I know what Snapchat is. And I, I hope that uh, in November is. people Pokemon go to the polls. But remember that? The There's November a callback. People. I remember yeah. that. <laughs> I don't want to some some Pokemon <laughs> go. I'm trying to get people to Pokemon go to the polls. Yeah. I want to be as good a president as Beyonce is a singer. Is it any wonder she didn't fucking win? <laughs> Beyonce? It, I... <laughs> I don't think she was in the running, was she, Beyonce? No, but I do find but... Beyonce's uh, habits into pol forays, if you will, into politics to be fascinating. She's a curse. She's a fucking curse. Whoever she supports and throws her money behind ends up losing. She throws her Why? money behind fucking Beto and he gets fucking destroyed. Like it, and he should have won considering the outside money that was coming in to wreck Cruz. I mean, I think it still holds the record for out of state money coming in for a gubernatorial race to another state. How can we use this? Uh, push Beyonce to support whoever the Democrats put forward. She has the kiss of death. And she has the cursed coochie. Yeah. So, you know. She's got a yeah, snoot. That's accurate. No. Yeah. Just saying. You can like her, her music, but remember, cursed. Moving along. I don't I don't like her music, though. That's the... You don't? No. Well, we it's have that not, in common. Neither do I. It's, it's overproduced my, uh, pop crap. McGen Ray. Yeah. Uh, playing cards for prisoners with details of unsolved murders. Hey, cutie. Want some candy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Get in the car. I love that one. <laughs> Original cat smack. <laughs> Paul Farrell, thank you for the 940. Polly, have you seen Sig put out a 320 and 10 million? Uh, no. But I have seen that they put one out in 45, which means they had a frame size for 10 millimeter. But I didn't know that they actually went ahead and did it. Sinatra. No. Well, you were offset by the price of the 200 series SIGs. And I can understand why. Hey, did you see? Mm, okay. What? Did I see the I price of the one you uh, sent me? Yeah, I was going to say, did you see that? You took a picture of a fucking dude. It had lightning cuts in it. It had a ported barrel. It was cut for a fucking red dot. It had a fucking souped up trigger in it. You, it was a high that's, end model. You didn't buy. You weren't looking at a basic one. That's the only one they had. Go on to Gunbroker or you know other 
areas like do, do, or is that the only gun shop you go to because some people do that customer loyalty one place is that it no it's a chain spot i just happened to be there that day oh well that but why, yeah, why do you think that's the only one that they, they had left because everyone bought up the other ones because they were super cool the 229 man, is a good classic. one right before COVID hit i happened to get my uh ar10 there it was a twenty five hundred dollar arrow precision uh, okay do you have time for a little story really quick i want to get over this one that uh see thomas donated a uh, dollar mayo murders adrasia you hobo lazy bones cry tart stop murdering people i Adrasia is like could be on the level of like a minor Christian. There could be a wiki for her. They're really good. <laughs> Thank you, C Thomas. Greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, uh before I get into the other donations and talk more about SIGs, go ahead. I actually want to hear this. So right when COVID started coming around, I ended up getting a eight AR ten. Yeah. Anyone who doesn't know what that is, that is a uh AR-15 style rifle that shoots 308 bullets. And I was on Gunbroker and the guy had his up for auction and it was a $2,500 Aero Precision AR-10. All customized, uh, new magazine drops, all that shit, a whole new rail, everything. I ended up winning the bid on it for under a thousand. I think it was like 910 and I had to actually file a claim with Gunbroker because the guy refused to send it out because he wanted more money for it. But he didn't oh. list, uh, what's it called, like a, a hold or whatever, a minimum on it. So people were bidding really low on it. And he tried to not go through with it. But I had to, like, file a claim with Gunbroker and do all that shit. It took him, like, two months to send it out. I thought that had something to do with where he started playing games with you about your FFL. He couldn't ship it, so he wanted more money. That was one of the ways. He, wasn't that the story? Mm -mm. Or did he just straight up, like, so you won the bid and then just said, no, I want more? Yeah, he just wouldn't ship it out. Oh. And I tried emailing him nothing. That's and I was like, bullshit. and on Gunbroker, you can pick the FFL you send it to. And I was like, just ship it to this one over here. And he just wouldn't respond, wouldn't respond. And then after I was like, I went to Gunbroker. And then like two months later, I got a call from my FFL saying, we just got this today. Oh, finally, though, Sin. Naked HD uh, uh, XYZ showed up. Oh, my God. Fuck ad. Sex cheaper Tinder. Fuck ad. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, somebody removed it. Well, he's too edgy for our chat, I guess. Fuck ad. That's actually what it says. Fuck ad! Exclamation I know, I mark. I mean, that's great. <laughs> I, you have to believe that there's a Bing slash Google Translate failure there, right? You know, it's supposed to be a sexy ad, and it comes out as fuck ad. It... <clears throat> so Nacho and I are going to do a video where we uh, discuss AI heavily, and uh, one of the things that we're going to do is demonstrate how AI not real, and if anything, the bots are going to be one of our primary examples. But we have a story later on that relates to AI, and uh, Ooh. You know, it's, it, 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 it's, it's not going to connect. I, I, I'm excited, Paul Farrell, by the uh, 320 and 10 millimeter. I'm excited by the 320 generally. Uh, Snow is not convinced by it, and fair enough. Lots of people aren't. But uh, hey, I'll tell you this about the 320. First functionally modular handgun with the trigger chassis system. You got to respect them for that. And tell me a gun that Dude. didn't have growing pains and uh, problems at the beginning. Does anyone remember when an entire generation of Glocks was recalled? I remember. That seems to have fallen into the memory hole. Hmm. The world's most reliable gun that everybody says is perfect that's obsessed with them. But an entire yeah, generation yeah, of them was recalled yeah, yeah. and then reissued. Huh. But I'm just saying, nothing's perfect. They're all mechanical devices. It'll get tweaked. It's fine. It, 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 we all, it, hey, Sin, how much do we love AR-15s? We love mm -hmm. AR-15s. Okay, look at the problems that they had originally with them. They switch powders, no cleaning kits, problems ensue, fixes are made. Now it's incredibly reliable. And one of the most Hearts popular sporting rifles in America. <laughs> Problem solved. Pinky says, I was always sexy. We don't need butts. I like the confidence. True. 
I like the confidence. Your boy Pat, thank you for the eight dollars in the ocean cat smack. Fuck. And there's your sig right there. An old school West German looking sig. That ain't no brand new one. I love it. I love it. Your boy Pat, thank you for the $8. Day five, and the left are still being completely openly racist towards Justice Clarence Thomas. The latest being George Takai calling him a clown in blackface. Funny how they're okay being racist, yet claim the right is. Yeah. Fuck well, me. No, no, fuck George oh, yeah, Takai. I, oh, yes, that too. Every time that son of a bitch comes up, I think the same fucking thing. No, no. Uh, Steve, Dave, nope, nope, stop talking. Take Hell yes, we're gonna take your <laughs> AR-15, <laughs> your AK-47. Welcome to the rice fields, mother. Drop it. <laughs> Sin. I started watching you first and have followed since. This is my fab Dono, and again, you guys are awesome. And no, not fanboying, I just enjoy yours content. Well, thank you, uh, Zeon. I really appreciate that. That's my fav dono, too. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm glad you enjoy it, and I hope you uh, keep enjoying it. Uh, Steve, Dave, nope, nope, stop talking, take Where my bi weekly. Where are we, John Boy? If I had to guess, I'd say Communist China. Are we gonna die here? Darn fucking tootin'. Continue. Paycheck donation. Thank you for being the introduction to this crew. And of crazy fucks, you can call a chat. I call trustworthy crazy people. True that. Thank you, Steve Dave, and thank you, Zeon. Hi, I'm Steve Dave for $5. Ah, a classic for the bi weekly paycheck donation. Ah, Fergus and John Boy ever gonna get out of communist China? Will they ever stop swinging in place? Will Drunkle ever not be a limey? Time will tell. Thank you, Steve Dave. I'm stealing that one from Ham and Beans, even if Molly Okami doesn't like it. Projection isn't just a river in Egypt. <laughs> I'm, I'm so using that. <laughs> I'm putting that. That's, that one's good. Yeah, no, it's good because you, you, you say it with confidence. Uh, taxation stuff. <laughs> and it'll work. God damn it, motherfucker. Uh, yeah. oh, uh, taxation stuff. Steve, Dave, tell him, and you, thank you for the $6, and here's your 30%. But don't fuck it. Bi-weekly paycheck donations have to stay dry, or I'll take your fish when you sleep. Speaking of, what's your favorite kind of fish to eat? Tuna? Salmon? What? Favorite I fish? I like a salmon. Bluefin? I am a big tu tuna fan. Yeah, bluefin tuna. Like when you get like like a big old chunk, like big enough that you can put on, on a barbecue. Yeah, it makes a, a fantastic in sushi. Whether it be sashimi and a mm. roll on top, classic sushi, just yeah, yeah, seared tuna. Man. Oh yeah. Oh, seared tuna. Good call. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. about um, swordfish? It was quite nice. Swordfish is good. Very good. Yeah. It's a great underrated white fish. J.K., thank you for the seven dollars. Any pro progress on the ham bone? Also, when is your Twitch channel coming? It's coming close. Sinatra was just asking me about that. Uh, I got the camera, uh, the one that I did a little bit of research and uh, found out what the best one was for my particular purposes, mostly 1080p and uh, a lack of focus problems of it constantly knocking out of focus so you could do manual focus. And then I bought the adapter for the boom arm that I got. So I'm pretty much set up to go there because I'm going to be doing painting and reloading to begin with. No noob games to begin with. It's, so it's going to be... Um, Polly Polly. So, like, me, Polly, doing a, a, an array of things to begin with. You see what I did there? I, I love an array. Yeah. Yeah. Polly Square. Yeah, Polly. Is it Polly is in many? Yeah. 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 I pay for your food, you brittle boned fuck. See, Thomas, thank you for the $3 and you brittle bone fuck. Everyone go watch Caroline Constner. She's fucking hilarious. Uh, I'm busy. All right, all right. After you're done. Uh, you mean to tell me the virtuous anti-racist left are a bunch of childish, angry, racist, as fuck degenerate r r hard, hard R's? Nah, bruh. Never happens. And someone called base department on Th Thomas Justice. Thomas Justice. <laughs> on Justice Thomas. I read it backwards because I started laughing about the nah, bruh, the never justice. happens. Justice. Thomas just every time George Takei comes up I think about him repeatedly calling uh, uh, Donald Trump the worst president in American history 
And I, I will never let it go. I know I've repeated it a lot, but I can't help it. Dude, you literally grew up in a fucking concentration camp during World War II. You were literally imprisoned in an actual, not an AOC version of a concentration camp for people illegally crossing the southwest border with Mexico. No, no, an actual concentration camp. You're all Japanese. We're going to round you all up because you could be potential spies. You were locked up because of your race, George Takai. And who did that? FDR. Hey, fuck you, man! Yeah, you think he'd have this attitude towards FDR. But he's a Democrat, so FDR is one of their golden boy heroes, and he doesn't want to think that Franklin Delano Roosevelt was the man who literally signed the orders condemning him and his whole family and every one of his ethnic extraction to a concentration camp. A Democrat what move. For? And this, yeah. and yet, nobody has ever said to him, "Hey, what about FDR, oh, man? Did you grow up in a concentration this man camp because of him?" Black. What? A drunkle. Have a few brews on me, brother. Thank you very much, Zion Showdown. I think I will. Thank you, dude. Much appreciated. Is that what the D stands for then? Was it D Donan? Delano. Delano. Yeah. Sounds like a brand of butter. But no, they, you're, like you're, you're, you're not wrong. Both C. Thomas and your boy Pat talking about what they're doing with Clarence Thomas. Uh, Jesus Christ, Joy Reid calling him, you know, Uncle Clarence. It doesn't get worse than that. It doesn't. It like like that level of openness i mean not that particular phrasing but that she thought it was okay and it turned out it was okay it was fine for her to do that there was no backlash there was no problem only weirdos from strange corners of the internet like us even pointed it out I, I, mind blowing I mean, someone went out and just like called him a straight up hard r I mean, think about Bill yeah, Maher. I, 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 and then justified it afterwards. I, I'm well. no fan of Bill Maher, but he dropped a house joke on his stream at, or on his show, and it, it was a joke. It was a bad one. It fell flat and failed. He was trying to tell an edgy joke, and it fell flat. Yeah, that's it. I don't think he was trying to be fucking racist. But then he, he has to apologize to Ice Cube because his producers push him into it. What made you think it was okay to use that word? Hey, Ice Cube, why don't you go ask... Joy Reid, why she thinks it's Freedom. okay to denigrate the first black man on the Supreme Court in that way. Well, because he doesn't think right. That is wildly racist, what you just said. And the intimation that he doesn't agree with me, therefore, he's a, like not up to the standards of being black, is also wildly racist. Fucking hell. See, Tom, thank you for the dollar. Also, fuck George Too Gay. He's... <laughs> I've never actually heard no. that one before. He's a sanctimonious, annoying, low IQ, identity crutch, wheeled crybaby fuckwit who was rightly snubbed on a space flight. Fucking Christ. Yeah, that was just sanctimonious. Tell us how you it. really feel. It fits his description well. Um, Doc, thank you for the A50. All right, I found a way to DM it to you with my limited internet capabilities. Also, fun fact, take the right amount of nutmeg and it'll make you trip. So many fun activities with household items. No, see, I was aware of that one. Not a lot of people are. You're right. If you take a matchbox full of nutmeg, you'll trip. And not for like an hour, but for like three days. Do oh. not attempt. I don't know. You, you told me to do it. You've told me how to do it now. I mean, <laughs> I could also tell you how to, I don't know, drive off a cliff. It's not a fucking. Yeah, no, I ain't got a license though. I could also tell you how to run off a cliff. It's... I know how to run. Yeah, but I could tell you how to get like the greatest distance. Ow. We just get as far away from it as possible. Are you trying to tell me that you're already an expert at these things? Have you tried it? Is there something we should be talking about? Should I be worried, Drunkle? Oh, not an expert, but I'm like, probably just as good as anyone else at it, you know? Well, I don't know. There's people that have successfully accomplished it. Have you even tried? I'm trying all the time. <laughs> Three times a week. Okay, I believe we had a story up here. Playing cards for prisoners yeah. with details of unsolved murders to continue indefinitely. Uh, Dial uh, nine. Look at this. <laughs> Do you remember when the Bush administration, George W. Bush administration, put out cards for here's all the people wanted in Iraq? And I have one of those decks. Do, do I you? I had one as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, was, uh, that, that was crazy. That was a little crazy. But here they go. They're doing it again. Or, well, doing it in a different uh, circumstance. <laughs> Hold on, let me invigorate the screen. 
and big and big and a new set of playing card covered with details of unsolved murders will be given to South Australian prisoners. That's where the crime's the worst, right where Far lives. Prisoners under a scheme, which have already resulted in multiple arrests, similar playing cards have been issued in state prisons since 2015 under Operation Persist, which the head of Major Crime Detective Superintendent Detective Bray said it resulted in 20 people being charged over 10 alleged murders. Details of unsolved murder cases are also displayed on posters and TV screens in prisons and the Department of Correctional Service offices. I don't get it. Like, what is it? Like, in, in case you feel uh, like ratting today, here's where some. Are we, John do you know boy? this person? I had to get us out, say, communist China. Are we gonna die here? Darn fucking tootin'. Doc for five. Here's another one for you. Super glue reacts with cotton balls to create fire very quickly. Huh. I do have are a hint these? for prisoners that are looking to drop dimes. Prisoners can dial nine on phones within the system to speak to Crime Stoppers without their calls being monitored by corrections staff. Uh, when you go to do that, guys, make sure your body's blocking the dial pad. Yeah, they see you dial in a single number, mate. You're going to find out what happens to rats. You understand what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> if, you're, if you're reaching these... for that bottom right-hand corner of the dial pad, they see it. Motherfuckers are going to be staring at people walking up to phones now. You know what I mean? It, yeah. Are yeah. these murders that are in the facility or like outside murders? Uh, mur outside murders. Unsolved oh. murders. I was going to say, I didn't realize there were so many murders happening that are unsolved in a jail. Oh. I mean, yeah. there's a few. Well, there certainly are. the perfection of formation i know what they're doing Otter marines uh torches 94 thank you for the seven dollars and the handgun hand bone since i keep donating to drunk i'm gonna spread the love to everyone this week happy poly day well it's my favorite day of the week thank you very much torches 94 i appreciate you spreading the love man and gamer valine for the 11 dollars oh good the dust storm is clearing up i can go into the building without looking like i flew in from iraq to convince engineers that they don't want me doing lab that they want me doing lab things because they walk around in like, these hazmat suits because like everything's like this clinical hermetically sealed environment she works in why did you sound so sarcastic when you said the first bit? Oh, good. The dust storm's clearing up. Because that's where I thought it was going. It was Valine. Are you trying to tell me that I was really far off on my assumptions? No, no, no. no. You, yeah, yeah, you're completely <laughs> right. Yeah. It was, yeah, sort of on the um, Christian Stale level. Oh, good. The dust storm is... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good for you. Wait. I got something for this. Sinatra has something for this, yeah. <laughs> Where is it? Oh, God, I got to cut down on these. Oh, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I can see Valid saying something just like that to nature. Oh, good for you. No more dust storms. She's she she's a, a lady with a temper. What? No way. Yeah, no, I mean, we love her, but, you know, don't piss her off. Angry hobbits are, you know, they'll kick your shins and you might not be walking for a while. Yeah, they'll destroy your, all your jewelry. Yeah. Drunkle, I got some for you. Oh. Sorry, yeah, News 24. Sorry, News 24. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Site of the worst bear attack in Japanese history is a chilling place to visit. And they created a memorial <laughs> site for it with a giant fake bear showing what happened, which is a little weird. A little weird. Are you shitting me? <laughs> I'm glad it's a fake bear. There's a well, yeah, it's a fake bear. What, what do you think yeah. the bear? They just trained Say the bear to not, stand very still. It's not so. They can do many tricks. It's not so bad when it's a fake bear. But it's a giant bear attack. Like, okay, let's read what happened. Oh. Every year there are bear sightings in Japan, and recently they've become more frequent, both on the mainland where the Asiatic black bear resides, up in the Haik mm. Hokkaido, which is home to the larger Usuri brown bear, known as the Ezo brown bear. While both types of bears are dangerous, Haikaido's brown bears are particularly fearsome. An encounter with a brown bear is more likely to result in injury due to their size and ferocity. In fact, 
the worst bear attack in Japanese history involved a brown bear. And the story of what happened is like something out of a horror film. As the bear killed seven people and seriously injured three under others in a Hokkaido, a, 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 a Hokai, I was saying it okay, fine, in a foreign settlement over a five day period. Jesus Christ, it just kept coming back killing? Yeah, well, I mean, it got a taste for it. Oh my God, look at this. Are you fucking serious? How how much do they try and capitalize on this horrifying incident? That bear is hench as fuck, mate. The attack is known as the Sanki Betsu. Sanki Betsu, brown bear incident. Although it is referred to as the Oh god. Another brown bear incident or the other <laughs> I mean, the bear attack. Is fine. Yeah. <laughs> as it took place in place. Place. In the town of place, in place. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, shit! Look at him! He's coming in! This is the fourth time he was back. Online reviews real? for the reconstructed site include comments like, I couldn't visit it alone. It's too creepy, and I was too scared to leave the car. But These... they're not real bears! But... Yeah, but people died there, man. But people have died everywhere! Well, I don't know. Like, I can understand... A like a war memorial because of the bravery displayed on the battlefield, the victory won. Gettysburg, for example. You know, I, I get it. You know what I mean? But like, where it's just a site of a bunch of like dead people. Would you want to visit where John Wayne Gacy's home was? And here were the boards and there's where the bodies were. And this is where he dressed I, I up as I think people would actually like to visit that. Yeah, Thank so, you. Okay, sick fox would. It's a good litmus test Mostly for a woman. Women. Yay, do you want to see you? Right, exactly. <laughs> Mostly women. It's a good litmus test for women. Hey, baby, you want to go to the John Wayne Gacy Memorial and we can look under the floorboards? And if, if her eyes get big and she goes, do I? That's it. Cut it out. Nope. Done. Keep moving. What's the matter, darling? You've not touched your Ted Bundy lasagna. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, frightening. Nobody wants to see that happening, coming in through their hut. Obviously, some do. It's a tourist attraction. Yeah. Man, the but Japanese the, are weird. Somebody has to. Yeah. Uh, yes, but... Uh, uh... Okay. Okay. A little change. I got five pence stuck up my nose when I was four. I was stunned to sneeze it out ten years later. What's it I worth with inflation? Yeah, I was gonna ask. <laughs> it hasn't appreciated in value. At any rate, that is what we're going to try to do. As you see, as you do. Thank you, San Miguel, for the three dollars and fifty cents. Although only making up thirteen percent of the bear population, brown bears make up fifty percent of all attacks. <laughs> God, I... wait. He's just talking about bears. I don't see anything that's going on here. And now we're going to move on. Look, the guy sneezed out a coin. Yeah, use a bank, you fuck up. <laughs> I'm just going to keep him in my nasal cavities. It's fine. It's fine. But the government can't get to it. Umar Kumar vaguely remembers shoving the silver coin up an nostril as a four-year-old, and then he forgot all about it. It's not silver. He never, it's, it was it, never spotted despite countless sore noses and trips to the doctor. Great doctors. But now... How did they miss it? I, yeah, that's what they I'm They weren't looking up his nose, I suppose. Dateline... nowhere. Great. Nursery manager Afshin said he came back down after about 15 minutes, just stood there and said, well, a five pence coin came out. We all stopped eating. I remember asking him, are you serious? I just cannot believe we never knew. I don't joke about five pence coins. You know this about me. <laughs> Fucking hell. I, I don't like the idea it's of that. You know what I'm, you know what I'm flashing back to? That scene when Schwarzenegger's pulling the fucking uh, bug out of his nose, the tracer bug out of his oh. nose, and um, Total Recall. Uh, yeah. Total Recall, yeah. Yeah. I mean, did it have that, to be the I mean, size of a good. golf ball? The actual bug was like this tiny little bullet-shaped object inside of a fucking golf ball. The fuck was the point in that? I... Protective kill. Well, I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger gets punched in the face a lot during his films, so it's just protective casing for the bug. Uh, yeah, I guess good point um 
dock for 650. We just had a guy turn himself into a meat crayon five miles from the house in a motorcycle wreck. Should we erect a statue of a motorcycle on the exit? Uh, yes. Yeah. And should we not visit the place where it happened, Polly? Because someone died there? Should we just close off the road now? No, we shouldn't close off the road or whatever the fuck. I just don't understand why you would make it into, like, okay, like a memorial where the hut where they all died is still standing, but hey, let's show the bear coming in and, like, ripping them apart. We'll put a few fake body parts here and there. It'd be great. Like, Jesus Christ, Japan. I... To be fair, they've still got a monument to uh, Fukushima. Nagasaki, God damn it, And Fukushima, actually. Oh, yeah, but that's They're something you memorialize. That makes sense. <laughs> Like, imagine if London started, you know, memorializing all the sites where someone got stabbed. You wouldn't be able to swing a dead cat without hitting a memorial. Why are you swinging dead cats? It's a saying. Swing a live one, you monster. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that makes me less monstrous, in fact. It's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of worse. <laughs> all right, let's do the thing that I kind of wanted to avoid, but fuck it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Three people in custody after police find more than 40 bodies in a truck near San Antonio. God damn. More Check than, their noses for money. More than 40 people have been found dead inside a truck carrying migrants near San Antonio in the United States. Texas governor said 42 people were found dead while San Antonio Fire Department chief would later put the number at 46 bodies. <sighs> 16 others, including 12 adults and four children, were taken to area hospital. There are reportedly Christ. no signs of water in the truck, and the temperature in San Antonio reached 39 degrees Celsius on Monday night. So let's just go over here. 46 people found dead in an abandoned tractor trailer in San Antonio. Now, I'm going to point out the thing that nobody wants pointed out. Nobody in major media news entertainment and leftists want pointed out. Airful. Matthew McConaughey, are you going to go down to the White House and uh, overact a screaming, emotionalized thing for you know, Biden's lax border policies? Because the report came out two weeks ago. How many people in the last 18 months have crossed that border according to the Department of Homeland Security? Three million. Three fucking million in 18 months. Three fucking million and Matthew McConaughey and every leftist is going to get super excited. We need to change the Second Amendment. We need new legislation immediately because mentally deranged kid shot up a school, which I admit is a fucking tragedy. It fucking sucks. I don't really see why it should alter everyone else's pre-existing natural rights. But hey, I, here we're, that's the reality of the situation on the left. The leftists are, you know, have gone nuts over it. Bunch of dead bodies in a trailer. What's the... What, What's that? Crickets? The sound of silence? The sounds of tumbleweeds rolling through their non-existent morality that was there in droves only moments ago. This is more people than were killed there. And they were just left to die in the back of a fucking truck. Because Biden's not going to arrest any of them. It's a free-for-all. How do we know it's a free-for-all? Three million in 18 months. How many people dead? How many bodies in the Rio Grande River? How many celebrities have done these videos where they go, Newtown, Brooklyn, uh, fucking... Uh, Jedi Council. Jedi Council, yeah, that meme. You know, all, all of the places in black and white, so it seems more meaningful. How many more times? Are you going to do videos about all the floating bodies in the Rio Grande and all the bodies in trucks and whatnot? Because this article goes through all of the different fucking bodies that have been found... Do they care? No. Does it make a difference? No. Texas governor lays it right on Biden's foot, uh, 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 doorstep. This is Biden's fault. Opinions, gentlemen. I hey, cutie. Want some candy? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Get in the car. Uh, they Really quick. Uh, Doc, thank you for the $9. Well, you know what they say when bad things happen. Just got to keep on trucking. Fuck. Oof. I, get the, they, uh, I get the joke, but as if anybody from the DNC, as if anybody in Hollywood or any of the activists who uh, have set up a tent on top of Morrill Mountain think anything other than, well, the problem is that the borders are even closed at all. 
If they were just wide open, these measures wouldn't be necessary. But they would, because these people do have a way to get in legally. They just don't want to. Darth Geist makes an excellent it, point. Three million that we're aware of. Yeah. No, nope, you're not wrong. Not wrong. But the issue is, is that the Biden administration refuses to do anything to help with the border. Any period. Full stop. Kamala wouldn't go down there. They wouldn't do anything. They the, all they did was they took the baby formula that was already short and made sure that went to the border. Yeah. Like it, it and they go, "Why is this happening? We can't we don't know what's happening." Oh yeah, I wonder. Wait till they interview the uh, migrants the non-Mexican African migrants coming over the border. What do they say? Well, Biden's president, so now we can come. That's what the Haitians said. Why are Haitians coming across the southwest border of the United States? That's a little far from fucking Haiti. When interviewed, Biden's and Trump's no longer the president. It's like blah, blah, blah. Fucking great. Fucking great. Zelm Shodan, thank you for the dollar. He simply says, preach! Well, I don't really think I'm expressing anything that... Um, a general conservative or somebody who holds life, human life, in any kind of value, we can realize that the situation is dangerous as hell. Dangerous as hell. Let's not throw, the the drug trafficking, the child trafficking, the fucking uh, you know the the, the 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 amount of them that are used for sex slavery. The list just goes on and on and on, and they blame it that the borders aren't open enough. You've got to be fucking kidding me. There's a draw. This man isn't black. What? Rode Don't my pretend. brother into watching with me tonight. He said, man, that's the world's shittiest pinata. Can't say I disagree. Thank you, Doc. <laughs> Pretty fucking brutal stuff. I do have one story about Roe v. Wade, but it's because it takes us down a quick little uh, rabbit hole that I tend to fall down when I do these things, so I thought I'd... Show you guys what happens when I, when this happens. The failure of the feminist industrial complex in Time Magazine. <sighs> I, what? Feminist in what's, what the fuck is going on with that photo as well? A reflection of supporters and opponents of, so I took a photo of a fucking puddle. Right. That this this is the oh, yeah. gloomy, dirty reflection of all the protests that have been going on because feminism as a large scale uh, mass media accepted by the media idea has failed because feminism is a thing. They've won, guys. I mean, she, her, intersectionalism everywhere. There isn't a member of the Democratic Party on Twitter that doesn't have their pronouns in their bio. Uh, the idea of... Uh, yeah, we have to hire a minimum of CEOs. Laws passed that companies have to have a certain amount of female representation on the board, regardless of merit, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Feminism has fucking won the day. I'm not saying, you know, forever, but it certainly they've won the day. It was not like this five years ago. It is like this now. There you go. And it's grown into such a thing where people can have capitalized and become opportunists upon the thing. Anita Sarkeesian and the list goes on of people who make money just on repeating the talking points, right? Not criticizing them or offering any kind of insight or anything like that, but just saying this is sexist, this is racist, this is sexist, this is racist, right? So this article in Time Magazine, and I love that this is Time Magazine that once had Hitler as their man of the year, by the way. Did they ever apologize for that? I don't think they did. Um, no. Yeah. What I mean, is women's I empowerment... Sorry, go ahead, Drogo. Yeah, should they? I mean, he, you can't deny he had a hell of an impact. No, they shouldn't, but they... It, it, feminists like uh, Charlotte Alter certainly uh, push that they should. Uh, but, you know, let us uh, move along. What is women's empowerment in a world without Roe v. Wade? Women receive more college degrees uh, than men. Young women out earn young men in some cities. There are more more women run Fortune 500 companies than ever, but still, Roe fell. Women are directing Hollywood's highest grossing movies. Ariana Bosse just became the first openly queer woman of color to win an Oscar, and there's a woman playing Thor, and still, Roe fell. 
More than 60% of American women consider themselves feminists, including 42% of Republican women. More than half of American women say they prefer to work outside the home. The highest Gallup recorded in three decades of polling. And still, Roe fell. Jesus Christ. You, uh, I, you think you would be talking about, like, the Visigoths, you know, knocking down the walls of Rome and rushing in. When Roe fell. Dun, dun, dun. And there's the cover of Time. Feminism and the Fall of Roe by Charlotte Alter, where the abortion fight goes next by Abigail I don't, Adams. I don't know Abrams. how it's legal for them to do this, honestly. Be outright activists and pretend to be a news magazine? No, to straight up lie and say abortion's illegal. Yeah, I know. Like, that's what they did on my local news. The day it got repealed, they said all abortion is now illegal, always like blanket across the board like that's just not true no but i mean that's uh, it's it's only misinformation when the, you know someone else is doing it there was a i was chatting to a guy last night and this is even in england and he was ranting about how abortion has been banned in america and i'm going mate no it hasn't been banned and like i couldn't even get a fucking edge a word in because he's just, he's just fucking going off on one He's like, oh, ha, you of all people. I don't think you would have that opinion. I'm going to admit it's not an opinion. It's a fact. It's not been banned. And, and then someone put a napkin on their head and then slammed their glass on the table going, order, order. It got quite, uh, quite spirited. The Spectre on Brown's not wrong. Abigail Adams instead, I mispronounced it as uh, Adams instead of Abrams, which is her name. And yes, the, in my opinion, greatest first lady and American history would have slapped the shit out of somebody who made these arguments. I completely agree. Um, none of that is exactly the fault of mainstream feminists, and many feminists did sound alarms about the threat to abortion rights. And that's what their whole point is. There is is no that right? Yeah, well, yeah. Supreme Court kind of made a decision on that. When the Supreme Court makes a decision on gay marriage, they're all for it. When they don't, let's get rid of the Supreme Court. Oh, the problem is that Republicans are, were, were uh, wide open with what they were doing, that they wanted to, that Roe v. Wade was a bad decision, and the Democrats didn't do enough on local and state levels to ensure that it didn't happen, especially by nominations to the Supreme Court. You know who else was against Roe on the Supreme Court? Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, right, Ruth yeah. Bader Ginsburg. But let's not talk about that. Let's move on. Even if the vote, you had put one more liberal justice on there, you still would have lost. You didn't notice that, did yeah, you? Yeah, it, was, it, wasn't it wasn't that close of a margin. No. It was fucking 6-3. It was 6-3. Even if you would have had another one, you still wouldn't have won that one. The, it, it, stop trying to blame Clarence Thomas and stop displaying your obvious, open, disgusting, nauseating racism, you fucking hypocritical bastards. Well, They'd rather blame him than admit that uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg should have retired. I that, mean, it's, it's in essentially retrospect, going they down should have. That, You're it? right. I agree. If she, if she would have retired, then you know, the, then Roe versus Wade, you know, it would have the vote would have gone the other way. But they'd well, rather blame have. a black guy than they would blame a woman. They, it wouldn't have gone the other way, even if uh, they, like Polly just said, had one more liberal justice on there, it still would have not gone their way. Well, remember when, Chuck, would have Schumer, been a six, four, remember when six, Chuck Schumer three. enacted what were the laws at the time, but a very technical push of the law to not put through Obama's nomination of a Supreme Court justice? The argument is, if that had gone through and Ruth Bader Ginsburg had retired, then it would have been balanced enough to make to cause it to happen. Dirty of the time away, you shot me! Fuck, I love Leonardo DiCaprio's wardrobe in that movie. Yeah. Because it's a recent movie, and he's got a suit that fits. And by fits, I don't mean looks like it was spray-painted on. Because men who wear super tight pants with suits, well, they're poly words. Freedom. Uh, Cult of Krill, thank you for the 750. The only person responsible for overturning Roe is Harry Reid. Mitch warned him about going nuclear on judicial nominations. Yes, I completely agree. There are some inside politics. Uh, I know some people... Politics is dry, y'all. When you start talking about the Gang of Eight and inter, not intra-party politics, 80% of what people tend to think of as left versus right, Republican versus Democrat is actually stuff that's going on within the Republican Party between caucuses or with more to the point within 
the Democratic Party within caucuses, but shit starts getting real dry real fast, guys. There's a reason I don't like talking shop when I'm not doing my day job. Because it's not particularly entertaining, but, but it is interesting. That's why you see news entertainers not talking about what's actually going on in terms of, look, here's the law. Here's why these things happen. Here's why this particular thing happened. Because it is all a load of technicalities. Guess what? The law is a load of technicalities. By definition, that's what it is. It's formalizing and codifying a whole series of technicalities on what can and can't be done and a set of orders and policies and procedures for government. Most people don't find that exciting. You know what is exciting? Putting on your team jersey and yelling that the other people are morally reprehensible. Yeah. Uh, Shelly in the chat said that's why they want to pack the court and put 12 justices in there. But uh, the what okay, Pierre, whatever her name is, came out yesterday and said that Biden has no plans to pack the court. Well, because he's just it, not but, going to do it. <laughs> well, like Colter Krill's getting at, right? You know what's going to happen if they do. We, the, the, it's it, it's stupid to have the Senate by a simple majority. It should always be 60. It was stupid to lower it to a simple majority because don't you realize what happens when the next Republican gets in? No, another Republican will never be in. Hillary Clinton's going to win next. Okay, after Hillary Clinton. Do you know what I mean? It's so short-sighted. Yeah. It's like, no, you want separation of powers. You want to be able to have to have some people of the other party on your side. One, it stops factionalism. Two, it creates a necessary um, system whereby everything will become a logjam otherwise, like kind of we have now. The filibuster doesn't become some super critical issue. I, Anthem, thank you for the dollar. Let's just give women the same reproductive rights as men. They will beg for a handmaid's tale in about 12 hours. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so why I wanted to bring this up, like I said, the rabbit hole, just listening to a, this is a, this is a news magazine, Time, a well-respected news magazine. Well, a formerly respected one. Many feminists, particularly rich, white, well-educated ones, assumed that changing hearts and minds was the difficult part. In a functioning democracy, winning seats and writing laws would inevitably follow. But that's not how democracy works. Nearly 60% of Americans did not want to see Roe overturned, including more than 50% of Republicans. You already talked about that, and your polls are fucked. The number of Americans who identify as pro-choice reached a record high in the weeks after a leaked draft opinion showed the Supreme Court. Okay, it, she's attempting to argue that it's not representative of what's going on. The laws that are being passed right now depends upon who took the seats. That's not how, how our democracy works. No. Charlotte Alter, that's not how a representative constitutional republic works. Everything isn't done Athenian direct democracy style, where let's vote on every policy together individually. No, that you're right. That's not how it works. And things that sometimes end up out of balance. In this case, though, this wasn't an out of balance decision. You fool. But let's just... You fool. I love this picture so much. These women are cheering the death of Roe. These are a bunch of white, educated college women cheering the death of Roe. There's even bubbles in the fucking picture, for God's sake, and they're celebrating it. This must burn her to her soul. These oh God, yeah, gender awful. traitors. These, these hard right Christian psychopaths or people that think the federal government should stay the fuck out of it never really out of place in it should be the states that are deciding yeah because that's all that the, happened the with the death of roe that they couldn't force the, states that didn't want to do it into doing it the thing that worries me and i i've worried about this out loud a few times is what and again this is of course all optics because obviously abortion is not and cannot be outright banned period full stop just can't happen but if this is an optics battle, that's all this is, full stop optics. What is the payback going to be? Like, what executive order is going to get passed strictly to shit on uh, pro-life? Let's be honest about it. It's mostly conservatives who are pro-life. What is going to be passed? And ever after that, whatever gets passed is going to get fought and blah, blah, blah. They pack the court, then Republicans will pack it more. It's the... It's the nonstop upping the ante 
Like, where does that end? Like, okay, Democrats will do something spiteful about this. They'll try to executive order pass a magazine restriction or a vaccine mandate or something like that. Because there will be revenge for this one way or another. Even though it is not the law, it it will be seen as that because, again, it's an optics battle. W like, where? what is the next step? What is the next step, in my opinion? Yeah. To use it for November. The, 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 yeah. the two Supreme Court decisions that recently happened about carry in New York, firearms carry in New York, and the yeah. fall of Roe v. Wade, it will be, this is what happens when Democrats aren't in absolute, utter control of the country. It's like, but you are. You have the executive office and, you know, but we don't have a super majority in the House of Representatives. We don't have a, we don't have a 60 majority over in the Senate. That's what we need. Otherwise, this kind of shit happens. If I was a Democratic strategist, that's exactly what I would run on. Because what else are you going to run on? You've got the fucking economy bearing down on you like a fucking angry Japanese bear. You've got, uh, I mean, seriously, you've got Biden's uh, need for pudding and his obvious mental decline that's clear to everyone who voted for him. You've got the Afghanistan ghost of withdrawal still haunting you. What else have you got to run on other than scare tactics? Have you seen the clips from The View of those four cackling, retarded hens? Talking yes. about the, 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 it's like, what's next? Notice the fear tactic, right? Immediately, what's next? They're coming after interracial marriage, which is what they said on The, on, on, uh, the View. After the fall of Roe, they're going to be coming. The, Whoopi Goldberg actually had the hot, red hot ghost pepper nerve to say Clarence Thomas pointing at the camera with her moralizing finger, you better hope that the next thing they come after isn't your isn't interracial marriage with your white wife. Can you imagine the depths of racism? They're always crying. We don't want to go back to the 1950s. You are attempting to scare tactic people over miscegenation. Whoopie. No one's coming after interracial marriage. Nobody gives a fuck about interracial marriage except for, like, you know, the 17 people in Alabama or whatever the fuck. Yeah, it's it's not the issue they make it out to be. No, or even remotely at all. Like, are you fucking kidding me? But, the, but again, the scare tactic has to be there. You better vote for us or else. As they have always said in electoral politics, the goal is not to give the person a reason to vote for you. The goal is to make it easier to vote for you than it is to vote for your opponent. It's harder to vote for this person. I, ca I just can't bring myself to do it, so I'm going to vote for this person. Very few people go in with a huge amount of excitement and do it, except for the people that were guaranteed to vote one way anyway. There's your bubbles. There's your bubbles. Zeon Shoden, thank you for the $2. Bubbles for babies. I like it. Bu bubbles for living babies. And the people that fucking cry out, this is going to cost women's lives. Actually, it might end up saving a whole bunch of women's lives because more than 50% of babies that are born are female. Oh, right. You don't care about those female lives. Never mind. I was confused. Okay. So the final point in this article, why I want to bring it up. I love this picture so much because it must just burn the soul of Charlotte. This, this thing even exists. I am as guilty as anybody in 2014. I wrote a piece that now strikes me as the apothesis of mid-aughts feminist myopia. Mid-aughts feminist myopia. This writer just loves writing her writings. This, yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> titled, This May Have Been the Best Year of Women Since the Dawn of Time. The essay starts with this cringy hyperbole. Since the dinosaurs roamed, since the pyramids were built, since the locomotive was inventive, there has never been a better year for women than 2014. And the listed reasons yeah. that she put out were superficial in retrospect. The success of Frozen, a handful of new women CEOs, Beyonce dancing in front of the word feminist at MTV's Music Video Awards. Okay, do you yeah, want to know mean, the kind of person that this is? Just, sorry, Drunkle, just to finish it off. She says, it now seems like a chuggy distraction at best. Chuggy, gentlemen. Hold on. 
Do you remember when I did a story some months back that on TikTok somebody suggested the word, a new word to describe millennials that aren't hip with the new thinking of Zoomers? It's old, it's out of style. Millennials think yeah. that, that, that they're the young people, but actually they've all gotten old and out of touch. And so it, it's cringy in a very particular millennial way. And the word they suggested was chuggy. And According the, to Urban Dictionary, is the opposite of trendy. Yes. Oh, that's so dumb. And it is, though, isn't it? It really is. And so who the fuck is Charlotte Atler? And this is where the rabbit hole comes in. That she would talk like she did, adore her own writing and use of obscure multisyllabic words and long drug drawn on phrases. Well, that's her. Oh, you're definitely a Zoomer. You're not pushing 40 or anything, trying to be down with the kids. Well, what articles has she written for Time? the highly respected news magazine. Well, let's see. The failure of the feminist industrial complex. The education of David Hogg. The last time, a lot has changed since the first time I met David Hogg in 2018. He has a beard now and a girlfriend and he's about to be a senior in Harvard. Oh my God. The NRA's power is waning. Opposition to new gun laws isn't. Texas Democrat runoff becomes a battle over abortion. Kathy Bernard is the Trumpiest candidate who wasn't endorsed by Trump. Our blue taller tough guy, John Fetterman, charts a new path for Democrats. The end of Roe could galvanize Democrats' burned out base. Elon Musk and the tech bro obsession with, quote, free speech. I don't have to oh, point out the pattern. Y'all see the pattern. The yeah. You are hired to write for a news magazine in an extremely particular way. And yo, this is not slightly left, left leaning. This is full on progressive caucus, hard left bullshit. This is radical. And it's coming from super mainstream time magazine. And she is one of their uh, uh, staff writers. Chuggy bitch. Dude, I, I, I don't even. Whatever. Taxation stuff. Oh, god damn it, motherfucker! Oh, <laughs> JK forty nine, thank you for the six dollars. I'm afraid the backlash will be the elimination of the filibuster in the Senate. If they're crazy enough to do that, then the government will be a true free for all. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think it's enough of that. I, I even went to her Twitter and read it, and it said, I'm here for the laughs, it says in her bio. You scroll through it, there's nary a laugh to be found. And when I, I don't mean bad jokes. I mean, there are no jokes of any kind to be found. It's retweeting progressive articles and her saying progressive things and making commentary upon progressive issues. And I have no doubt that Char Charlotte Atler, who lives in, take a guess, anyone, anyone? Upper East Side of oh, Manhattan. Uh, Shocker. I, I was going to say L.A. Uh, who else lives in the Upper East Side of Manhattan? The majority of journalists who live in New York? The uh, entire uh -huh. editorial team of The New Yorker happens to live in the Upper East Side of Manhattan? CNN producers live in the Upper East Side of Manhattan? This is an isolated area. It would be like, say, like that's the East Coast version of living in a particular area of San Francisco. You know what's going on before you even get there. You know what they're going to say before they even get there. And if you, Sin, were to move there, it would be... Well, you wouldn't be there long before they tarred and feathered you, I think. Yeah. I uh, I, I was reading Tucker's book, Ship of Fools, and he mentioned how incestuous media is. And you really don't notice it until you notice it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Everybody knows everybody. Everyone's worked with everybody. You can't get in unless you have an in, that kind of thing. It's disgusting. And if you aren't hooked up with the right cartel, the CNN or the Fox cartel, you're done. You have no chance. I agree. It's, it's lar large groups of people who all know each other. And it, it's not surprising. Uh, uh, you have Chris... Fuck. Used to be on Fox, hosted their Sunday morning show. Chris... Last name slipped my name, my mind. Uh, uh, Hayes? Used, no, he used to be the respectable guy that was like, you know, actually balanced and wasn't like an outright conservative, but he hosted the Sunday morning show on Fox, but he went over to CNN Plus and then the thing collapsed underneath him. It was hilarious. He didn't want to be on Fox oh, anymore. Oh, fuck. Um, 
his contract had run short anyway and didn't want to renegotiate. Wallace. Thank you. Chris Wallace. Yeah. Remember re remember how bad he did in that presidential uh, candidacy oh, yeah. debate? That was that was rough. Thank you, I Am Werewolf and uh, uh, Hate Camel, uh, Wallace, and just another guy, and everyone. Wow, man, everyone's informed. Damn, they're quick. <laughs> just, yeah, I wish I there was less of a lag, man, because I could ask chat. The answers would be instantly there. You know what I mean? Okay, let's move on to something fun, guys. I mean, this, it, it can't be all this stuff. The mysterious case of Skinny Bob, the alien UFO pilot captured by the KGB. How's that for a topic switch for you? Have you ever seen the Alien Bob video, guys? I have not. Would you like to? Yeah. Yes. It's legitimately creepy. Ooh. This looks like some X-File shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, oh, come on, you fucker. Don't be a fucker. Go back. Oh, just right. See, you sons of bitches. You sons of bitches. Loading video. Yeah, I know. I'm going to do. No, the ad block's not on. Okay, there we go. Okay. Skinny Bob. Round two. Loading ad. We're turning the screen off. <laughs> We're not, I'm not advertising for the loading ad. Look at it. It's still going. Do you want to test your IQ? No. 20 questions, immediate results. No, thanks. It's still loading the ad. For fuck's sake. Okay, there we go. All right, now we can bring it back on. All right, Skinny Bob, everyone. It's a, 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 the blinking eyes are a good effect, man. They're kind of creepy, the shadows and whatnot. Yeah. I'll, I'll admit, he's it's freaky. Be, he'd be prettier if he smiled more. <laughs> he would. I do not, for one, want to clap those alien cheeks. No. I just, I mean, just to say you have. No. Oh. It was that that's, that's the aerial view of Skinny Bob? Yeah. So uh, they, when you read through the article, they claim that those uh, hands and the way that they're articulated uh, at each joint and whatnot, and the articulation of the eyes. Uh, and whatnot. Look, look at all the recommended videos. Jesus Christ. Like, it's all just... <laughs> I mean, it's, it's janky, but it's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, and the idea is it is old. The creepy video of an alien entity uh, to have been recorded by Soviet scientists has been claimed by some UFO enthusiasts as the clearest look yet at an extraterrestrial. And thank you, The Daily Star, for all of the... Uh, uh, sexy babes. Chasing that A and want to save time. Shut up. I I gotta I gotta and admire the fact that they don't even up. acknowledge the fact that it might be fake. Now the, the clip of the creature with the bulging skull and the black eyes have been a standard images for alien visitors first emerged in 2011, but has come back up when an anonymous Reddit user who went by the name Ivan zero one three five. The video was supposedly recorded by the KGB after a ship crashed. From the Zeta Reticuli star system. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. It's hard to believe that an alien form of such a distant planet would blah, blah, blah. Video effects artist Randy Sharp said that the clip was fake. CG technology at the time of production would have required a level of expertise, someone with a high level of knowledge and high level of experience slash knowledge. No one has ever tried to make money from the footage, which some ex experts estimate would cost in the range of 250 grand to create. Really? Yeah. It's shit. <laughs> well, I mean, it's supposed to look like it's from, like, the 50s. You know, like the alien autopsy video? You never seen that one? No. No? No. I prefer people in autopsies. Well, who doesn't? But, you know, just for a change of pace. Moving along. See anything wrong with this apartment? Uh, yes. There is a shower in the kitchen. Yes. There is a... No, wait, living room. Well, no, kitchen. No, wait, there is no. a oh. fireplace in the bathroom. Right. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, keep keep going. There's more. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Doc donated 1450. Thank you. 
<laughs> for the grievous lightsaber error. I haven't seen that one in a minute. Consider this a bribe to get an ad blocked, you silly otter. Also, <laughs> I've been down bad. <laughs> Still not over my cold. Apologies. Consider this a bribe for the ad block. Uh, also, you've been down bad and made some pretty questionable partner choices, but I agree with Sin would not clap those cheeks. There's a toilet yeah. in the shower. There is a toilet in the shower. You, you, that's another one. You've scored it. I, I mean, another one. The sink is not by the mirror. That's right. The sink is not by the mirror, but is that the sink for the bathroom or is that the kitchen? There is no sink by the mirror. There's a heater right next to the shower. It, there's no... There's carpet. The carpet. There's carpet. Good call. I missed that one. Far pointed it out. She's like, wait a minute. Why is there carpet? I'm like, oh my God, there is carpet. That doesn't make any sense there's at all. There's a painting not hung on the wall. Well, the, there's no stovetop. There's, I think that is there's because there's it stove. is a bathroom, though. I don't there, think no, no. This is the thing. entire apartment. The, what? Yes. What? Yeah. There's the AC unit, which is right beside the shower. And the and far suggestion was that this is supposed to be for the barbecue enthusiast, and that's why there's the fireplace and no stove. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah, okay. This are okay. Modified apartment with bathroom and lounge room advertises for four hundred a week as Adelaide's rental what? crisis deepens. Oh, four hundred a week? You fucking kidding me? Yeah. For a room. Now it. I, I love the bit of frostedness at the level from like, I don't know, the knee to the shoulder or whatever, you know? It's like, I could still see the chair right through it. There's no privacy there. Like, if you know what I'm saying, like, and why did you use glass at all? Why didn't you make it solid? Or the crinkly glass where it really distorts anything from the inside, you know what I mean? I mean, there were yeah. options. This is, this is your idea of how, like, I've been in dorm rooms that are less spacious, that had a kitchenette, that were better organized than this, what? the fuck but this leads into a second story when it comes to building codes requirements can be a matter of interpretation lawyer says because this does not meet the building codes in adelaide at all good, good. <laughs> that doesn't meet the building codes anywhere <laughs> tear it all down oh yeah that the toilet is in there too is a bad one uh play dr zach no question the, it, I mean, and they put a little chair in there in case Shelly wants to come talk to you while you're taking a crap or having a shower. There's a little chair for her, man. <laughs> or alternatively, you can use the wooden chair inside the shower as for like your shampoos and, and soaps and whatnot, yeah. which, you know, is perfectly placed. There's no shower shelf. Uh, well, you could use it Just as a shelf is what I'm saying. I mean, why is there anything wooden inside the shower box at all is my question. <laughs> Good God. And it, it goes through. It's like, like the longer you look at it, the worse it gets. Yeah. It's like, so <laughs> yeah. how could this possibly be up to code? And it's like all by interpretation. And so this actually was approved as an apartment that they're required to have a kitchenette with a stove top uh, and a bathroom that has privacy that it can't be in the middle of the living room. And somehow that frosting counts as the privacy. Okay. And the fact that the toilet is also within the shower and the frosting is there by squeezing it through the requirements, the regulations, they got it through. The fact that it doesn't have um, a stovetop is covered by the fact that you can, uh, uh, it's got a 220 socket in it. So you can plug in any kind of um, stovetop grill that you want, like, you know, the single element grills. Yeah. Yeah. You can plug oh, one of those right. in and pull all the amperage you need. So it's just a matter of appliances, and that's on you, bro. <laughs> I just like looking at this apartment because it's so bad. It just gets worse and worse. <laughs> and the thing that kills me is, like, I really actually have lived in dorms and seen other people's dorms that are less spacious than this and made far, far more effective use of the space. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can you imagine somebody saying, like, small room, so many square feet, uh, kitchenette, uh, separate bathroom with privacy, and a fireplace, and, and your woman's like, oh, honey, it's even got a fireplace. Let's go look in. Let's go check it out. You walk in, and it's this <laughs> shit. 
I fuck. But then there's still going to be people climbing over each other to rent that place as well, you know? Yeah. That's the sorry state of things. Yeah. Okay, we got a fun story because the, the fun in Australia continues because everything in America is depressing and angering. Three men jailed over major importation of meth into Western Australia after undercover police stank. That's some meth! So how much meth is that? That's a lot of meth. Look at the... the I'll let you just go with a lot. Yeah. Like, like big old chunks of meth. Like, look at that. You can see them. Some quality meth. Yeah. Three men, including a sophisticated drug syndicate known as the Ethnic Brad Pitt. Huh. N Nicola... M Maskamiskoff, at 35 years old, known as the ethnic Brad Pitt, and his two buddies, Gray and Newton, were found guilty by a Supreme Court of arranging importation, which involved bringing drugs to Perth from the eastern states by rail in May of 2019. The drugs are at a purity of 80%. The estimated street value is between 4.5 and 6.5 million. They were packed in one kilogram bags, so we can go ahead and... Uh, you know, if you want to count the tops, pause it. You can count out how many, how many keys were there. Uh, Who wants to see the ethnic Brad Pitt? Yes. You want to see yes. him? Finally. I looked. I looked. Yeah. I looked him up. There he is. Uh, I'm disappointed. You too, huh? I. I. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I was, I've I was seen better. More. I've seen worse. Well, yeah, of course I've seen worse. But I mean, where do you even get off, man? Like, I don't understand why but you would. Ev I... Everything about this is it, it, I, the. I need more Brad Pittness. I need more ethnicness. <laughs> it's missing both of the qualifying it things. Is. It is. You're right. It's it, it's it's not very ethnic. I mean, I mean, what Nikola Maskamikov is that Polish? Is that Russian? Is that what? It's ethnic. It's ethnic, yeah. I, is it Slav? Yeah, it's uh, OST stand ass. Like, I just, not at all like Brad Pitt, no. I guess, I gotta say this, like, okay, so he's he, he's a big wheeler dealer in Perth. Is this handsome in Perth? I'd like to think oh, not. It, it, yeah, I, the town of ethnic where he hails. Yeah, yeah. Here's another Perth guy, uh, Zena Tseksaknaknako, had an eight-year jail yeah. term in U.S. for multi-million dollar tax message scam. Now there's your ethnic Brad Pitt. Or That's least, more like it. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 at least ethnic generic model guy, you know. Or Premiership football. Why don't we just say generic model guy? That's a better name. Everyone knows who you mean when you say that. You mean this guy. Yeah. And so what yeah, is it that he did? Guy, yeah. Perth man, Zena Dejak Ko, has been sentenced to eight years in a U.S. federal prison for his role in a multi-dollar uh, text messaging scam. Now, listen up. The Russian-born former rich lister and regular fixture in Perth's social scene pleaded guilty in February and was charged for eight years. What is it exactly he did? What was the scheme, the scam? He defrauded hundreds of thousands of mobile phone customers in the United States by placing unauthorized charges on their mobile phone bills. The practice, known as auto-subscribing, saw U.S. customers billed $9.99 a month for services such as horoscope, celebrity gossip, and trivia facts without their knowledge or consent. Sinatra, how many times have you been billed for something recurring? Many. <laughs> yeah, many. How many times have you been subscribed to something or did you sign up for something that was first month free and you could cancel at any time and then they make it next to impossible to find out how the fuck to cancel? That That is most of my reoccurring. <laughs> well, well, you understand what I'm saying? And this guy caught eight years for it? Fuck, motherfuckers should be in jail all over the place for this shit. Audible got taken in a class action suit over not making it clear how to... Um remove themselves from how to remove yourself from their list and how to stop recurring their monthly recurring charges. I was one of the people that got the email because I was signed up for Audible that said, oh, and as a matter of um, a recompense to our user base, you get a free credit to download one of the audiobooks from this selected list. You should have seen the selected list. It was like, fucking hell, how did you get away with this in court? Your turn. 
Name oh, no all shit. the things that start with the letter N. It's Sorry for, for the brief interruption. Needed to show this donut to my brother. Please continue <laughs> your regularly scheduled entertainment broadcast. Uh, that is my favourite kind of interruption, Doc. No problem at all. Thank you very much. You know, uh, Polly's got some good donations that your brother would like as well. Oh, yeah. Peak of epic manliness, what? Mm-hmm. So I could finish my new setup? That'd be great. Mm -hmm. I'm not pushing anybody. I'm just saying it's there. If you are feeling so inclined, listed below. Uh, this one, rare queen of Sheba orchid, ten years in the making, sighted in Western Australia, South Coast. I just wanted to show off this flower because that's very cool. Some very bright colors. Yeah, it's a hybrid flower like that took a purple. long time because orchids are notorious uh, to splice with. Like they they die easily yeah. they don't take hybridization well this They're one little bitches let's face it orchids are <laughs> little bitches <laughs> okay orchids being the little bitches that they are they managed to find Thank one you. that was amiable to such results and it turned out pretty fucking cool i just like the picture just turned out to be like a fucking ethnic dandelion yeah so not to remember yeah. we said we were going to talk about the the seat of consciousness in the brain is something deep and philosophical. Was it this? No. <laughs> a little flower. No, it wasn't this. I was going to say I, mean, I, I don't know how a, much I can go off this one. I mean, I guess it was a fair question. We should do it as another stream, perhaps a free for all stream or something. <laughs> I don't know. At some other point, because I I would really like to get into this. Far sent me this article. Philosopher. UT Place donated his brain to the University of Adelaide after dedicating his life to studying the mind. Now, in undergrad, uh, this man's writings, Dr. Place, were required reading. And I found myself in direct opposition to his positions and uh, wrote papers arguing against them. And there's his fucking brain. It's, it's a bit dirty, it. isn't it? Go touch it, Polly. <laughs> touch yeah, the yeah. brain. Put your little otter paws on it like you would every other painting that you see. Go poke the brain. <laughs> poke the frontal lobe, Polly. I'm just saying, if you're going to donate your brain. There he is. Like, uh, clean it up a bit first. You know, have some pride. Yeah, there, there's Dr. Place. Uh, and anybody who's ever done philosophy of mind, philosophy of consciousness knows Dr. Place. He is one of the founders of the Australian school uh, called Australian Materialism. There's only one. No, it's just th that particular thought on how consciousness, how the physical matter of the mind gives rise to consciousness happens uh, is in a particular school of thought. It was very popular in Australian universities, became known as Australian materialism or Australian positivism based off of American logical positivism. So it gets real deep, real fast, not very particularly fun, but fascinating nonetheless, because how is it that the wetware of your mind gives rise to the con gives rise to consciousness? Because there's no biological explanation for it. So you can't have consciousness without a brain, but yet there doesn't seem to be anything within the brain that gives rise to consciousness. So what the fuck do you do with that? You attach a promissory note to it and say science will give us the answer one day. Yes, but every attempt so far has not only failed, but failed miserably and seems to point at that there isn't a property of the wetware of your brain that gives rise to consciousness. They can't even discover how neurons firing electrical signals to each other results in anything remotely close to thought. It's it's a challenging, it fun like a think piece. So like, I don't know, Sin, there's at least an hour. <laughs> You know who he's shooting that would be uh <laughs> He looks like Howard Moon from the Mighty no, I Boosh. Just, I find it interesting because this guy argued strenuously that everything that happens in reality itself all boils down to a series of propositions, and all propositions exist within the brain, not the mind. Thus, brain states are synonymous with mind states, i.e. the materialism of it. The entire cosmos all of reality and existence boils down to a series of material propositions within the brain and i find it interesting that there his brain sits as he claimed that the entirety of the cosmos existed in there materially just no longer active thus the cosmos for him ceased to exist 
in he some sense. Sounds like a total buzzkill. Yep. Yeah. Like you'd be at a party and you'd be like, oh shit, here comes Dr. Place. Zombie Teddy says, now I'm hungry. Darth Mando tells me to lick the brain. I will not lick the brain. And I'm not a bigot for not lick wanting to brain. do so. You can touch it. Put it in a robot, Darren Root says. Yeah, it's... Poke it with a stick. That's not a bad idea. Just poke it with a stick and be like, you feel this? You feel this, doctor? I Poke it with another brain. Because like I said, like um, imagine taking on someone that you Take were so box. philosophically opposed to on a given issue, Sid. Like think of an issue like like Marxism or I don't know, something else you felt very strongly about. And and, and having like taken the guy on and then now seeing a picture of... Uh, it would be like arguing over someone's economics. Okay, here's a perfect example. You are not a fan of Marxism nor uh, uh, central planning, right? Uh, yes, that is correct, sir. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, imagine putting being put in the position of having to write against Bernie Sanders' position papers and his widely disseminated uh, propositions regarding the value of central planning and the value of high taxation and the value of foreign socialism to the point of communism and Marxism, all predicated on Marxist ideals. And then one day you have him sitting in front of you, all of his tax papers, where you see he didn't disseminate any of his own wealth. And you didn't see, it, you know, you see all of it right there, his personal economics. That's what it's like looking at the doctor's brain. It's like, this is what we were arguing over the whole time. And there the fucking thing is. It's very odd for me. Uh, thank you, I Doc, for it. the $18. Sorry, payday's next week, so I can't hit the peak of ep Epic Manliest today. How far are all? Oh, ah, English. How far off from how far off from you from finishing the setup? Though, I get your meaning. How far off am I from being completed and all that shit up, uh, shit and stuff? Uh, not far. Like, I hate to name a number. That's gaudy, isn't it? I actually know the number, but I don't. It's well, chuggy. It's it is chuggy. Name it. Name it. Name no, it. it's 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 like I need because like uh, titty streamers do that shit. You know what I mean? I only need four hundred dollars to buy these shoes, and then one of their little idiots gives right, them the money. There you money. go, guys. Four hundred dollars. Okay, well the number. Get Polly his shoes. The number is four hundred dollars. That's why I was saying peak of epic manliness because it's five hundred, and that would like after PayPal takes their cut. And fine, I said the number, but I'm not happy with myself over it. It's very chuggy. You chuggy motherfucker. Well, do, but remember like the, kid, well, which bitch. girl was it? Was it? Uh, 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 she said she wanted the handbag, the the fucking the designer handbag, the handbag. and somebody came out of nowhere and paid the three thousand dollars for that stupid little minuscule handbag that was only big enough for a fucking lipstick and her fucking ID. We've got Gucci. It was a fucking Gucci handbag, a tiny little fucking thing. Gucci. It was it was gauche. And she actually named the price. It's only this much. And so we just hit her up with it. I'm like, that's disgusting. Guys, no one's under any obligation to give anything more than they want to support all three of us. Agreed, gentlemen? I mean, it's just wrong otherwise. Yes. Like guys, that sig I want, it's only how much was it, Polly? Fifteen hundred something. <laughs> and I want a handbag. Oh, what you you mean the 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 fireworks setup from this morning? No, the SIG. Oh, the SIG, uh, SIG Sour you wanted, right? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I was, I was video calling with uh, Polly and uh, Far and Sam. Yeah. And I was at the fireworks store. I'm like, guys, look at this fucking thing. It was a fireworks uh, assortment box. What was it, two grand? Yeah. Yeah. Keep going, though. It was called Grounds for Divorce. <laughs> nice. You know, without skipping nice. a beat, Sam was like, if you blew that up, there would be no grounds left. <laughs> they actually called it. marketing there. It was <laughs> incredible marketing. It was the, a huge, uh, clear, open front box display of all the various types of fireworks you got. It came in at eleven nine or $1,999.99. It was called the grounds for divorce collection <laughs> it was it was good it, it was really good i was like that is fucking awesome and molly okamis i need that <laughs> uh one quick last thing uh somebody asked uh, why did he donate his brain like why his brain at all 
it's in a museum an and, and the idea you can visit it but it as attested to in his will he wanted to donate his brain not to science but to philosophy uh because again the school of australian materialism holds that the universe is comprised of propositions and all those propositions are perceived within the brain that thing right there therefore all of existence everything you feel all of your sensations all of your perceptions all mathematical equations etc all exist because of that in that literally as a material thing in there they don't exist as a function of the way that it works but as a material substance of it so now anything I, you want to learn you have to physically unlock yeah and it's like so if you want to so it's it's sort of like jokey because he was like a guy that was into comedy come visit my brain because this literally is all i was and all any of us are oh you are well yeah and so that's why he donated his brain to to sort of like as just how down for the cause he was it's like come visit my brain by appointment only and it literally is by appointment only. Doc, thank you for the $5 on the Exploding Cat Girl. My brother Sparky is running through a list of donos he wanted to see, so he's so here's some Cat Girl. I believe he's going to hit Drunkle's favorite. Well, the visit from the Queen? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, your favorite time. is uh, 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 Thumper's Revenge at $22. Hey, you don't know what my favorite is. You told me it was your favorite. You said it on stream that Thumper's Revenge was my You're best one. someone else, mate. You're thinking about someone else. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? We've run long, and I know we started late, but this will put us right at uh, two hours, so uh, let's just uh, go ahead and jump to our titular article to wrap it up, because unfortunately, I don't have a game today, and I am uh, with bated breath awaiting a phone call from the specialist who's supposed to be calling me to talk about my results, even though it's going into the evening, for fuck's sake. I may have an ulcer, guys. Surprisingly, man who drinks heavily, <laughs> sleeps little, and encrusts himself in a thick layer of cynicism might have an ulcer. I would never have imagined. I, weird, right? Weird. Anyway. um, So I named the stream uh, Mammoth Veal Jerky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gold miner finds most incredible 35,000-year-old baby woolly mammoth in North America. What? Well, that's in terrible condition. Oh, wait a minute. Is that that go. Gucci handbag that that girl wanted? <laughs> it's just as leathery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's a, there there's a a uh, like I said, it's uh it that, that is not going to be tender woolly mammoth veal. That is going to be tough jerky. Yeah. You're going to be chewing yeah, on that a while. Yeah. It's chewy. Yeah. It's well done steak. I was thinking about naming the stream Waiter, my mammoth feels a little dry, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's I, I come up with some great titles for things I just can't use. The last video I did was about a fucking uh teacher for eighth grade, you know, about the whole don't say gay bill thing. And I, I, I wanted to call it School of Hard Cocks, <laughs> but uh, but of course, you can't, can't you're not allowed. Like, that is such it's a crying shame. I felt cheated. No, I agree with Zombie Teddy. It actually, for 35,000 years old, that actually is shockingly well-preserved. Uh, a nearly perfect, perfectly mummified baby woolly mammoth thought to be more than 30, 30,000 years old. Well, okay, you guys need to figure out. Is it 35 or 30? Uh, has been accidentally unearthed by a gold miner in Yukon, Northwest Canada. It marks the most significant and well-preserved discovery of woolly mammoth in North America's history with a partial mammoth calf named Effie found in an Alaskan gold mine in 1948. The mummified animal was last week dug up of permafrost in the Klondike gold fields before receiving a blessing from elders of the First Nation group Trodok to Hakdok. What would you do for a Klondike? I spell that. Uh, well, right there. I, I don't know. I, I don't know right. how to say it. They named him Nunchoga, which means big baby animal. Okay. I'll, I, you can't blame them for being literalists. I, I guess. <laughs> Errol Shogun, thank you for the five dollars. Three K for a freaking handbag. For that much, I would buy an M eighty four, a Serbian PMK. 
parts kit or buy a cheap plot of land in Oregon, Arizona, or New Mexico. These people really need better priorities. Arrow Shogun, I cannot agree more. For Christ's sake, you could actually buy a plot of land, like, you know, a quarter acre, what have you, in certain states and whatnot. 3K for a fucking handbag. And what's its resale value? Nothing. It's not like after you get it, you can, oh, well, you know, if times get tough, I can sell it off or whatever the fuck. This is a perfect example of, you know, spending money you don't have to buy things you don't need to impress people you don't know. I don't like even. It's just, it's just a bag, bro. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's to make other bitches feel jealous because ain't no dude going to know what the fuck that bag is. It's only other women yeah. that are of your mentality that are going to know what that bag is. So you're trying to impress greedy, superficial bitches like yourself that you don't know. There's, there's no men in a bar looking her up and down going, oh, look at her handbag. Yeah. In the same way that no man has ever said, oh, my God, look how long her eyelashes are. Hmm, those are some expensive shoes. Yeah, look, they got the red bottoms. Those are the fancy pants ones. Cool. And no man ever <laughs> in the world has said, hey, I like those Wolverine fingernails. Yeah, that's true. Yep. No lesbian has ever said that either, actually. <laughs> yeah. They dislike him. Uh huh. For good reason, Sin. Yeah, because there's a lot of domestic violence in lesbian relationships and they can be used as weapons. <laughs> but statistically, yeah. it's true. I. Uh, I mean, if we're going to talk about statistics, the old 1350 always pops All up. Right. It, it? <laughs> you say it in 14 words or less. Oh no. Careful. Jesus. Easy. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, wrapping it up here uh, for the day. Sorry for uh, no game chat. I was putting some shit together, but uh, I do have something fun for next week. Uh, if y'all recall, we did uh, uh, Mushrooms Polly Finds Unsettling. I came up with something else like that. And I'm, I, I think I'm going to do it week to week for fun. I remember that. There's, the unsettling mushrooms. Yes. There's all sorts of things that I find unsettling for irrational reasons that I can't put rational reason to, obviously. But it's just, it's just like, that's disturbing. And I'm not sure why I don't like it. It's not even disturbing, is it? It's not, it's not freaky. It's not scary. It's not disturbing. It's just like, ugh. Yeah. You know, I'm unsettled. Exactly. Yeah. It irks, I'm the opposite it irks of me. Settled. Yeah. Yeah, it, it doesn't. It, it doesn't comfort me, not at all. Quite the opposite, in fact. It is the opposite of comfort. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, like that. <laughs> no God! Oh. No God! Please no! 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 <laughs> and. The last it, pressure it, it squirt takes stop. place, and there it is! No! It doesn't stop! <laughs> Junior Sparky, thank you for the $30. Very generous, greatly appreciated. Well, not illegal, it is frowned upon to call a toddler an asshole. Pro tip, toddlers can be asshole. assholes. Yeah. Yeah, now, Sin, I know you've called your own kids assholes. Have you ever called an, another person's toddler an asshole? Oh, by default, they all are. But have you ever called them uh, that? Like, did ever, did one not, ever run into your face. leg at Walmart and you turn around and say, you little asshole, have you ever done that? No, not to their face, just behind their backs. Oh, okay. Once we was uh, having dinner at my grandfather's and uh, my sister was there with her two kids and one of them dropped his fork on the floor and I went, ha ha ha, retard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She did not like that. <laughs> is that a true story? It is a true story, <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> Like, he laughed. But she was shooting a dark look at me, going, like, don't say that word around my kids. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> stop raising retards. Then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, uh, clearly I'm not the one at fault. All I did was describe the situation. Right, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm doing observational comedy right here. You're the one who's raising some fucking mentally disabled children here. Uh, Bryce just gifted me Assassin's Creed Rogue. Nice. Over Steam. Thank you very much, Bryce, saying, by my calculations, you should have all the Assassin's Creed all the way up to Origins, you creedy bastard. I think you might be right there. Oh, I, oh, I'll tell a lie, actually. He also gave me uh, Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered. I think Bryce is responsible for me having every single Assassin's Creed game now. Wait a minute. Assassin's 3 uh, 
Assassin's Creed 3. That's the one that takes place during the American Re Revolution, right? No. Oh, okay. Wait, hang on. Is it? I, th I, I had thought. I'm definitely not the expert here. I had thought, though. Uh, let's have a look. American Revolution. Yeah, it's Assassin's Creed 3. Oh, and, and it's the, and and it's the remaster the you got? It's the remaster. Dude, I've watched, like, is the remaster worth it? You know what I mean? For Assassin's Creed 3. And I watched the video and they did, you know, they do the slider thing where it's like showing the same scene and it's panning back and forth to show you the differences between the remaster and the original. Fuck, it's gorgeous. It looks. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've, uh, oh. I never got past uh, hey, Revelations. Well, so, uh, it's do you really like current? Brand new well, gee, I don't know. I guess. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta be, be positive. positive. Answer affirmatively when asked what you think. Doc donated ten dollars for the Muppet Chunks. Thirteen percent of people are fifty percent sure that the biggest impact on women's ego and self-esteem are in fact other women. GV, Agreed. can you concern? Yeah. Can you confirm? I. Yes. Answer in the affirmative. Yeah. Yes. Do you remember that scene in? Uh, remember that scene from Seinfeld, Drunkle? I mean, because there's there's a show we got in common, right? We we watched. Narrow it down a little bit more, mate, please. <laughs> Say it again, please. Narrow that down a little. I remember all the scenes. No, no, it's just for every I, single show ever. I don't know, y'all. Y'all get to reference the boys. Y'all get to reference uh, uh, Futurama. And I've seen the whole series of Futurama, but not to the degree <laughs> that you guys have. Where it's, I'm like, I, oh yeah, I kind of remember that episode. Don't get me wrong, I love the series. Shreds. I just don't know it like you guys do. But Seinfeld's <laughs> different. We both know it and can both <laughs> reference it. Remember when Jerry was talking about how he's get uh, all this fight happened and this this competition and this other thing? It was the the race episode where he was oh, going to yeah, race the, race. the guy. Yeah, he's dating a woman called Lois. Yeah, yeah. I choose not to run that episode. <laughs> right. Yeah, she goes, Gee, why are you guys so competitive with each other? I just don't understand this. It's been going on for years. And Jerry asks Elaine, well, what do women do? We just tease other girls until they develop an eating disorder. <laughs> What a beautiful oh, piece. Wow. It's funny because it's true piece of comedy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the very few funny women right there. Yeah. We, we just, you know, steal other men's boyfriends or talk shit about them or, you know, try and undermine their self, their sense of self-worth. We don't even get <laughs> not all women, I mean, you know, and not all men are looking to be all, competitive nah. to the death with each other. But when it comes Seinfeld out. Seinfeld didn't. What? He, he chose not to race. But he did in the end. Yeah, yeah. That's a Superman tune. I mean, you mentioned Futurama as well, nice. No? I mean, look, I was I was reading a, an article to on on Reddit today about. Uh, I'll bring it up on 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 Monday, but it's uh, to do with uh, climate change and everything, right? And then uh, someone just comments going, "Well, it's time to start mining ice from asteroids, then, guys." And then someone just comments going, "Yeah, like what my dad puts in his whiskey, and then he gets mad." <laughs> <laughs> It's one of those where you read it, but you can hear it as you're doing it, you know, and it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, just another guy. Not all, but enough. Ex uh, enough that every woman knows about it, and every woman who's honest will confirm it. It's like, yeah, women are super fucking harsh to each other. Jesus Christ. I can't imagine what a woman's change room locker room was like in high school. Can you imagine the judgy fucking glares and comments flying around in there? Yeah. Well, I mean, especially with teenagers as well. Yeah. Like, you know, the more insecure a teenager <laughs> is, the, the louder they're going to be about other people. It's like, did, yeah. It's like, did you see that bitch? Like, oh my God. I, I've heard what they say when they're in front of guys and being like kind of careful about it. You ever listen in to women talk about each other when they don't think there's any guys listening? No, I don't listen to women ever. Yeah, no, you do. That is a you've, good you've, you've heard it. You've that heard Shelly on the phone chat. talking to her friends. You know. No, she hasn't I got any friends. She's like, I, I, I stand by my previous statement. <laughs> Don't want to get involved. I hear you. It's a good plan. All right, so there it is. <laughs> uh, you got, as I understand it, you gentlemen are doing a rollover. Sinatra's doing a rollover. Yes, I am doing midweek Sunday over on Twitch. I'll throw that link in the chat right now. Um, waiting for Shelly to get up here to the studio, and we will be started shortly. And I, of course, will not be rolling over to twitch.tv slash drunkleplays as uh, I will be busy watching Sinatra's stream. But I will be back tomorrow with some Red Dead Redemption to make up for the lack of gaming stream tonight. 
No, all right. The first AAA title that I'm going to play on uh, Twitch will be Assassin's Creed 3. So after I played the game for a Ooh. few months and know how to fucking play it and not uh, totally knew myself out publicly, nah, then nah, I'll start streaming nah, it. No, 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 no. You got you got to go in with fucking fresh eyes, man. Oh. Uh. What a wonderful song. Little Wagner. Yeah, it is. Little ride of the fat Valkyrie ladies. <laughs> they are. They're always presented as chubby. It's not my fault. That's true. Yeah. The curvy. The curvy. Zeon Shodan, thank you for the eleven dollars and the Marine Otters. All right, gentlemen, I'm going to eat and then do bed. And so see you again soon. And what a wonderful lead-in. Thank you very much, uh, Zeon Shodan, for the eleven dollars. He's going to see us next. Where, Drunkle? Oh, we're going to be back on Friday on the Sinatra Screams channel, 10.30 p.m. GMT, 5.30 p.m. ST, 4.30 Central, and 5.30 a.m. on Christmas Island, Polly Dub. Excellent. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yeah, that was a solidly one victory. just found an IGN article saying Todd Howard has confirmed Fallout 5 after the next death. All right. Can't oh, wait to God see it. Damn. Thank you, Doc. Appreciate the 1601. And Sparky. Hey, yes, and Sparky. Damn right. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you for all showing right. up. Thank you very much for all the donations. Sincerely appreciate it. If you haven't yeah, already, hit oh, the like button. You've been a legend tonight, mate. Thank you very much. Yeah, She's no so generous, shit. Um, and legends in the uh, the gifts, like all of the... Uh, whatchamacallit that I got, all of the uh, Old Bay seasoning stuff and Old Bay chips. Don't think I didn't appreciate that. And fucking uh, a toe. I, uh, July 4th is coming up. I'm finally going to be able to open my Stag Junior. Woohoo! Yeah, boy. Fuck yeah. And throw it up. Yeah, and then gifted a St. Celestine. Fuck. Oh, man. I was talking to... Uh, uh, what? The St. Celestine, the 40K figure. Oh. I don't know what that is. It comes with her with her two side soldiers. I, I'm so I, it, 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 it's the most beautiful 40k figure I've ever seen. It's the only one. It's the first one I wanted to buy. The only one I wanted to buy. I'm really looking forward to whatever it together. you say, man. <laughs> no, I was talking to Quiz. It's like, man, do you even think I can attempt to paint this thing? And he's like, I'll help you through it. I'll help you with the colors and the whatnots. And I'm like, cool. So yeah, super excited because it's coming to your PO nice. box in. So you know, keep keep an eye out. You were so here for this. Box. You don't yeah, remember? Yeah. Nope. Oh. The chat's super fucking generous with stuff like that, and they're always greatly appreciated for doing shit like that. All right, we will see you on Friday, ladies and gentlemen. Let's all go watch uh, Sin on Twitch now. Talk with Shelly about fat girls. Or yeah. yeah. Sweet. Have a good night, everybody.